Episode 2 of Nuka Mac, a Vampire the Masquerade virtual tabletop campaign. In Episode 1, our four characters were abducted against their will and accused of uh, attempted regicide and sentenced to death and saved at the last minute by a mysterious archon named Willem Glass who himself offered them a way out of their death sentence if they took over leadership of a city called New Kamak, Indiana, where they are now imprisoned, in a sense, for the next year. They just now met the outgoing prince of New Kamak, one uh, Randolph Delacroix, who uh, they just met at the bar of Club Wonderland, There was a question immediately before we began the live stream of, uh, is everyone still injured? Because when they were abducted, all four of these vampires were impaled with a wooden stake. Darby did mention that he, he burned blood to heal his wounds. Darby did, in fact, heal his three levels of damage, which I've I've noted on his, on his card here. Uh, he's burned three of his blood points and healed three levels of lethal damage. Everyone else at some point in the future does have the opportunity to do the same thing. And it'd be a good idea to do that. But at the moment you are now meeting the imminent and famous Prince Randolph Delacroix, who you've only heard described by the Archon Willem Glass. This is the gentleman that. Uh, stumble greeted you at the door when you first were escorted in by your armed guard who the prince not your guard was looking kind of out of place in club wonderland everyone else here is kind of a young club goer dressed kind of smartly dressed like they came out to look attractive and and have a good time prince Delacroix looks um i can actually pop up there we go. Prince Eloqua actually looks um, uh, <laughs> quite quite out of place. He's he's wearing clothes. They're not. He doesn't look homeless, but he looks like someone who who just stopped caring about whether his clothes are clean or dirty or not. He's he's wearing a suit jacket, but it's it's a uh, it's a dirty kind of tattered suit jacket. Uh, he's wearing slacks, but they've obviously had stuff spilled on them. He's wearing a t-shirt under his suit jacket. And he's he's also he's carrying a, a sippy cup. It's it's a plastic lidded sippy cup with a straw. It looks like something he brought from home. And he is he's stumbling over another patron at the bar and saying, "Hey guys, did you meet with Will downstairs? How did that go? Was he creepy? He's always kind of creepy, but he's a nice guy. Trust me, I've known him for a long time. So, what do you think of the place? I'm, am I being weird? I'm being weird right now. Welcome to the place. This is my place. It's gonna be your place because you, you come in here to take it over. How are you doing? How are you do- it's your turn. You should talk uh, now. It's it's your turn. I w- so I." W- I lean in to try to talk. Uh, I would like to ask for a point of willpower for asking to try his drink, which I think is about the most reckless thing that any human being can can do. Um, uh, I believe this is uh, equivalent to my nature of thrill-seeking, danger-do, and I am going to ask the, His Highness if he wants to share uh, his his beverage out of his sippy cup. You, you yes, go ahead. You can, yeah. Any he, hey. he hands you. Hey, uh, can I can I try that? Absolutely. What, what, he hands you his sippy cup. What, what do you got in there, sir? It is mostly, uh, mostly Bacardi One Fifty One, but with a little a little extra that makes it palatable to our kind. If you know what I mean, wink. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that'll do her. Hey, th- thank you for sharing, sir. That's very generous and have appreciated all the rest of your uh, fine hospitality. People speak quite quite highly of you. Um, it's been a warm welcome. Prince, if, uh, Prince Eloqua, circumstances. Prince Eloqua, uh grabs the back of Darby's head 
and and pulls it in really close and with just really gross hot breath uh kind of yell whispers <laughs> right into darby's ear the the sippy cup is so people don't see that we're drinking blood and then lets go of his head and then like winks uh, are we all just standing there watching this uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, I get it. I'm yeah. not anything. Um, or uh, uh, smart. Sure. Hey, this guy. This guy's got it figured out. So, uh, Mr. Delacroix, they, Brilliant. It, if it's all right with you, they did mention something about uh, a tour. I, I would like. Uh, oh yeah. You know, I got, I got a bunch of stuff. I got a bunch of stuff going on. Okay. First off, I want you to meet. I want you to meet. I got. I got people here behind the bar. We got. We got Marcia Dalton here. She is the general manager of this place, and you should know her, Marcia. These these people. They're gonna. They're they're gonna be in charge here. And behind the bar, uh, you see a woman. Uh, she's trying to manage a bunch of people coming up to the bar ordering drinks. You don't see any other bartenders behind the bar at the moment backing her up. She seems overworked. Uh, she's in the middle of trying to clean a bunch of pint glasses that are dirty and backed up. She's trying to clean them fast enough to be able to uh, get them to the draft lines to get beers for people. She's trying to cut up limes real quick for cocktails. And in the middle of it, fucking Randy is trying to introduce her to some people. So she's trying to be polite. Uh, she's like, what? What's the... Sorry, what? And Randy's like, these are the people that I told you about. They're they're coming in. They're taking over for me. And Marsha's like, that's uh, that's cool. I look forward to meeting you sometime that we're not absolutely slammed. So, so cool. And Randy's like, Marsha's great. She practically runs this place. And Marsha says, I do run this place. Randy doesn't do anything. And Randy goes, <laughs> yeah, uh, Marsha's Marsha's absolutely right. Marsha, by the way, is responsible. Uh, did you didn't you do that thing over there? And Randy points kind of past Marsha at at something. And Marsha goes like, "What are you talking about?" And Randy leans over the bar and starts not very stealthily fumbling with the bottles. He he reaches over the bar and he and he grabs a bottle and he pulls it up and he sees that it's like slow gin and he drops it and he leans over the bar and he pulls a bottle up and he sees that he's like peach schnapps and he drops it and he grabs a bottle and he pulls it up and he sees that it's Bacardi 151 and he's like eh, yeah and he very not stealthily sticks it in his jacket he's like okay yeah now I got uh, the tour continues and he walks away from the bar and Marsha absolutely saw what he did and doesn't seem impressed and also doesn't seem like this is the first time that uh, he's done that he continues walking around and he's like so this is this is club wonderland it's it's a cool place it used to be an insane asylum it uh, was closed down in the 1970s it was turned into a nightclub in like uh, the 90s by by uh, some kindred uh, it was uh, there was two brothers the McFong Fache brothers they were Malkavians they they ran it until uh, like I think like 2008 uh, or something like that and then they skipped town and they left it to me and uh, I've been I've been the owner of this place ever since and uh, let's uh, let's take you around and as he's doing this and he's sort of leading you around the place whenever you guys pass by any employees he's like hey look at these guys I'm I'm retiring this is my retirement I'm taking off these guys are gonna take over and uh, the employees are like kind of acknowledging like yeah Randy the owner this is the new okay cool and they're like yeah we we'll just whatever Marsha tells us to do we're we basically answer to Marsha Marsha's in charge but cool the owners you get the impression that like uh, they, they don't really care like the people who are working like they all have jobs right now and they don't they're used to kind of ignoring whatever Randy does Randy goes oh uh I gotta 
I gotta take you to take you up to stage to meet my harpy. I got I got I got a I got a Toreador uh, up up at the stage. He's working right now. I got a DJ. Uh, his name <coughs> his name's uh, Jeffrey Lamprey. Goes by DJ Ray Ray. He's he's working working up at the stage, and um, uh, he's he's got to meet all of you. He's he's been my harpy. He's probably gonna be your harpy. Let's go up to the stage and, and meet him. And then Randy kind of stumbles past all the people on the dance floor. <clears throat> and there's a raised stage, and uh, there's a guy standing up at a table working a bunch of complicated equipment. And Randy walks up to him and there's a guy who looks like in his, he's in his mid twenties who's holding half of a pair of headphones up to his ear and he's, he's operating the equipment and Randy's like, Hey, Hey Jeffrey. Hey Jeffrey. These are the, these are the guys. Hey Jeffrey. These are the guys who are working here. And the guy and the, the DJ is just like, Kind of like glances at him and, and nods, and Randy's like, it's Je- "Hey Jeffrey, can you come down here?" Hey, hey Jeff, and then finally, the DJ just like drops his headphones and goes, "I'm fucking working." What? And Randy turns to you like, "You got you guys will have lots of times to talk with them. We can we could do uh, other stuff." Okay, so um uh. We have a lot of stuff we got to talk about, and we should probably do it like not here, like not in public. Uh, we should go to my place, which is going to be your place, like like the prince's <laughs> pad, right? I call it I call it Delacroix Manor. Actually, I was I was worried about Prince's pad, but Delacroix Manor sounds sounds suitable. That's a sweet name, cool. killer. <clears throat> Love that. This whole time, he he still has the bottle of Bacardi 151 sort of tucked under his under his arm. So he starts walking back to the hallway that runs alongside the stage, back in the direction of like down the stairs to the basement where that uh, conference room was that you you met with the Archon. And when he gets to that hallway, he turns around and he just kind of like looks at the, the club one last time. And he, he sort of sort of gives, gives the whole club a, one last wave. He goes, he goes, bye, everybody. And just nobody responds or waves back. Maybe because all the music is drowning him out. Maybe because no one cares. And then he shrugs and he turns around and he goes back down the stairs. Do you guys follow? Uh, yeah. 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 Of course. You meet Randy in the basement of Club Wonderland. Mm-hmm. And he says, <clears throat> well, first he, he looks around. He makes sure there's no, there's no staff around. And he, he pops open his sippy cup. And he, he takes the lid. He says, uh, well, one of you hold this real quick. Reach out and grab it immediately. And he, he screws open his 151 bottle and he, he fills up his sippy cup halfway. And he's just like spilling 151 uh, all over. And then he, I'm probably like trying to help, you know, I don't know. Like if it's not awkward, like trying to steady him there, up or help him pour it. Yeah. Is there a bathroom nearby? Get some paper towels. There is a bathroom not within sight of where you are. It's at the far end of uh, of where you are. Uh, he's like, I got it. I do this all the time. His fangs. Seems kind of far. I, I, I step off and give him his face. Yeah. As soon as he waves me off, I let him just. He's like, thing. he's like, I I do this all the time. I have like a lot of experience drinking. Okay, I am a smooth operator. His fangs <laughs> pop out. He gouges just a big chunk out of his wrist, and he starts violently bleeding into his sippy cup. It's like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I'm like looking around, making sure nobody is paying attention to what is happening here. He's, like he starts topping off his sippy cup like like it's a soda gun from a bar. Just uh, so, all right, we're good. Now uh, this is. I, I wait while Barbie looks concerned. I lean over and I say, uh, I whisper to him. I say, 
Darby, to be fair, that we are in Indiana. This kind of thing <clears throat> probably happens pretty often. I visibly relax, just like oh, right. <laughs> Checks out. Now Thank this you for the perspective. This is literally a mess. <laughs> this isn't the best way to do this, but like in a pinch, this is a way to do this. Yeah, I see you're using your own there. You're uh, sort of getting high on your own supply, so to speak. Yeah, like if you can get immortal's blood, then that's you're actually like. You, you're actually eating. You're actually gaining nutrition, and that's preferable. Oh, yeah. But like, I don't. That's a pain. And getting. Can I ask an unfortunate question, Graham? Sure. Uh, do I owe? Do I have a blood bond? To did I drink this guy's blood? Um, a, a tiny bit of it. You didn't drink. Oh, you I like see. you sipped from it. You didn't drink a whole point of it, but you, yeah, you drank some of it. So like I'm not, I probably so the fact that I've been a little sycophantic like kind of makes sense like I am inclined to really like this guy right now uh, a little bit a first level blood bond is is a subtle blood bond how okay. much blood do you have to drink to drink a, a pint yes a right pint? yeah like kind of a lot a, a bunch a point like a like a donation. Is. Yeah. It has to be intentional. <laughs> it's definitely like an intentional effort to drink that much blood. Huh. Not just like, oh, I, I pricked my finger. Like a sixteenth of a gallon. Blood bond. Yeah. So if you're Can like, I go ahead and heal right now? How do I do this? Oh yeah, you can burn uh, It's like a reflex thing. So I'll everyone take this time to So uh, Augustine Excavo and Archibald, you all have uh, three levels of of lethal damage that you can heal by burning uh, three blood points. Uh, do you all wish to do that? Yeah. So, How much damage did we take last session? Three. Uh, three, three lethal. Points. So in the, you got staked, son. In the health section, one, two, three. Excavo, yeah. you are totally healed, uh, but you're quite only, hungry. You have I spent uh, three blood points, right? Uh, yes, uh, but you are quite hungry. You have only two blood points left. Where do I actually oh, see? Oh, that's right. That? I said first got mad. Um, Where do I actually run my hit points? Um, um, your total is based on your uh, generation, right? Archibald, in Vampire the Masquerade, there are not uh, so much hit points okay. as there are different uh, states of health. You have, I can actually okay. show you, I sketched them out for you here. Um, there are uh, seven. Are those, yeah, seven states mm -hmm. of health. Okay. And as you go down, you accumulate wound penalties. Oh, I got you. All of your so rolls. I'm incapacitated that I'm like, done. I get it now. Cool, cool, cool. So that's the deal. So I can spend my blood to fix those? Yes. And it's an equivalent rate? Yes. Okay, okay so... I'll do that like Kimber did. Okay. In theory, if I drink this... 151 blood mixture. Would that help me in any way? You can drink. I'm sorry, what? You can you can drink Randy's blood if if he would allow you to drink a, a large quantity of it, and you can uh. you can feed from Randy. Doing that in in a large amount would be. Uh, a rather intimate act and you would yeah. indeed be blood bonded to him. How long can I go like this? How long can you go like that? Just un until I spend the last of my blood points. Is that it? Well, you spend a point of blood every time you, you awaken every night. So with two blood points left, you have two nights to go before you don't have any blood oh, left, God. left at all. And then at that point, every night, you'll start to lose a point of health. And then once you don't have any right. blood and don't have any health, you'll just kind of go into it's, into torpor. Yes, that's right. Also, that's blood fuels a lot of the cool shit that you can do, so it's good to have enough. Yeah, I was trying to And if you take out. more damage, <laughs> when, I don't want to have some. Next? Spoiler. Randy is going to be a good host, and he's going to see that you get fed. Okay, good. 
Augustine, did you also want to take this opportunity to heal your your wounds? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Three blood points for three states of health. Yep, yep, yep. Randy says, okay, so this place was, it was a mental hospital for a long time. It got shut down in the 70s, if I understand this right. And in like the depression or something, it got it got a bad tuberculosis. Like, believe it or not, there was this bad pandemic that happened that required people to like quarantine themselves in place. And when this place was a mental hospital, the patients and even the staff needed to completely lock themselves down. I know it's hard to believe like being locked down in a building, like even like where you live and work and stuff and not being able to go out and travel freely. That that sounds like really weird. But was it the, was it the 1870s or the 1970s when it was shut down? It was shut down in the seventies, but the tuberculosis thing was like (laughs) way earlier. When, when the, when the tuberculosis thing was going on, they built a tunnel so that the main uh, mental hospital that this place was, which is, uh, I think it was called Riverside Mental Hospital, because we're near to a river, so that the staff who's working here could get to the administrative building, which was on the other side of the river. When the McFung Fache brothers bought this building to turn it into Club Wonderland, they also bought the administrative building, which had been connected by the underground tunnel because of the tuberculosis thing. They turned the old administrative building into their residence, which is now my residence. So here in the basement, there's a tunnel that we could take to get to Delacroix Manor, is my point. So you guys want to take a secret underground tunnel to get to my house? Only oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Absolutely yes. Tunnel sounds great. I do have one clarifying question. So this is an ex-mental institution, and, and it was renamed... Club Wonderland. Yeah, they were like, they were into the Alice in Wonderland thing, I guess. Seems like a little, like, kind of, like, and there's mean? a black humor sensibility. It's, it's all very macabre. Oh, like, I guess we are, guess we are vampires. It, it, it works out. Yeah, like, I think it, it started as an Alice in Wonderland thing, and then it kind of went off the rails because there's all sorts of stuff in the club that like doesn't have anything to do with Alice in Wonderland. Marsha can Copious tell you meth for, for one. What's that? Copious amounts of methamphetamine for one. Well, it, it just that, that, that is a feature, not a bug, my friend. <laughs> Marsha can tell you a lot more about the history of the place and what went on in it. She knew a lot more about like what the place was like back in the day. Cause when I took over, she was the one that like made a lot of changes to make the place profitable. I guess the McFung Fache brothers, like I, I came in and out a club wonderland as like a patron, but I didn't really know a lot about what the place was like as a business she came in and she had to figure out how the place when, when they left, they took most of their staff with them. So when I took over, I had to replace most of the staff and Marsha was just like, I don't know how the fuck this place ever ran as a business. They must've had just like gobs of money and they were cool with this place, just hemorrhaging money because they were spending ridiculous millions of dollars all the time just letting this place be uh, a carnival money pit and they were cool with it so she gutted a lot of ridiculous stuff out of here that she could tell you all about so she could turn this place into like an actual self-sustaining like mostly normal nightclub 
Oh, is, is Martha Kindred? What's that? Are Martha and like the DJ and all those people are they va- vampires too? Oh no no no! Uh, Jeffrey's the only one. Like oh. Barry, uh, the Bruja, he he sometimes comes in, but uh, basically, no. If there's like like kindred stuff that has to happen in here, I I ask that like uh, the club be closed down for like a private party. Marsha doesn't know about kindred stuff. Tonight, Jeffrey, as far as I know, is the only only kindred there. And I don't even think there are any ghouls in the in the whole club. So uh let's let's get going to Delacroix Manor. Cool. All right. So and uh Randy leads you to a to a door in the basement and he gets out a set of keys uh, opens up big metal door says oh Marsha has sets of of all these keys copies are made she can give you copies opens up a big door and you see uh, a long hallway a long lit corridor there are like lights about like every 10 feet uh, immediately inside the hallway is a uh, like a hoverboard not like a future sci-fi one like the thing with little wheels that occasionally explode randy looks at it and goes oh <laughs> uh, yeah i usually i only have i only have one of these i guess i'll just i guess i'll just walk with you guys though so yeah okay let's just let's just walk down the, it's just it's just like a half mile up here so okay let's start walking so how long have you guys been uh, been working together? I don't know these people. I mean, I, they, we, I, we all met today. I so. Be hard pressed to to tell you any of their names. Are you, are you guys joking? Except my my fellow intellectual Darby here. Yeah, no, this guy gets it. Otherwise, it's just a free for all out here, sir. I got to tell you honestly, I, I I don't have a lot of faith. In uh, in this Motley crew, I've been working with them for as long as I've been working with you. There's the plant guy and the the French one. Aren't uh, you just met each other? Oh yeah, no, we all got kidnapped, and then uh, and then we were gonna get executed or something. And now, if I remember, uh, we're being forced to turn this city into some kind of, or, you know, keep everything going all hunky-dory. We apparently have to lead. Wait, what? It's what all is, pretty uh, arbitrary, to be, to be quite honest with you, sir. What is Mr. Delacroix's expression as he's hearing all that? That one? <laughs> I'd say bemused and nonplussed. Agape. Okay. I was tempted to kind of cut it out there and play it cool, but it it's out there now. Very confused. Uh, so who said that we knew how to do all this shit? Because they lied. Uh, it's uh, I, executed, so here we are. He, he, I kind of know both of them. I say, ha ha ha. Uh, we're all very jet lagged. This guy is saying crazy things. So well, tell us uh, from your perspective. What what are you waiting here for us to do? Aren't you all like like a SEAL Team Six group of group of fixers that the the Camarilla sends in when oh, when, yeah, totally. That's when shit That's when shit skill. really really know. hits the fan? Yes, yeah, she's like a <laughs> person. Just open, just guffaws. She's a computer person, and I read books. So I'd say yes. I don't know exactly like so. this guy. This guy grows trees. <laughs> Seal Team Six. I, are you not an elite group of? Let me stop you right there. You had us at that one, and the answer was no already. More like elitist. <laughs> so what? I can fix a Lincoln like you would not believe, though. I'll tell you that now. Yeah, the car or the president. Go, Randy. With with shaking hands, is is popping open his 
his his sippy cup and refilling and 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 trying to drink and he's he's trying to refill an already full sippy cup and he's just spilling blood and 151 all over his his jacket and his shirt and he's just drinking and drinking and his his hands are shaking and he asks what exactly did will tell you was going on with this city said everything was awesome don't fuck it up basically things are super good better he said that we couldn't possibly mess it up randy i i do have to ask is your retirement as voluntary as our uh assignment here um i'm i mean it's i i I wouldn't yeah, why say like a no, bro. That sounds like I a no. I wouldn't say it's involuntary. It was Will's idea. Mm-hmm. But uh-huh. I mean, like, he's How are you gonna let him tell you how to live your life, bro? He's he's my friend. He's this guy's always had my back he's the guy who Your friend like, wants you to leave he lied to you he's always pushed me to to like be in positions of power and to do stuff that would like reflect oh, cool. well you know what he pushed he pushed a stake into my chest and uh pushed me into a situation uh, about which i know nothing so uh, this guy does not seem like a good guy. Got a question you read on that one? I Sorry, have, you're awfully lucid. This guy, I'm, I'm at my natural state. I'm actually kind of agitated, kind of up. If you, if you, he said, you I am amped. I've known this guy for a long time. He's always had my back. He's 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 always he's always helped me out. He's always given me. Like, just openly derisive. Darby just doesn't have time for this shit. He's like, oh, whatever. Okay. That that's the problem. Everything friend. everything started going to hell in the city, and I I didn't know who else to turn to, and I called him. I said, what do I do? And he told he told me he told me don't worry. He he was like my only friend in this situation. He said, don't freak out. Don't worry. Don't quit. Don't leave the city. Don't let anyone else leave the city. Break off contact with anyone outside of the city except for me don't let anyone know that anything's wrong deny any rumors put the city on lockdown no communication i'll I'll relocate you and then he he had an important assignment for me and it's some it's going to be like an upgrade and that's what's going he has because he trusts me to do some important secret mission and that's what i'm doing in the middle east i don't know what it is but i'm going to find out when i get there Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So this secret mission that he has you taking part in, are you skilled for this mission? I lean over to Andy as he's about to answer that, and I uh, they're totally going to kill him, right? <laughs> See, I, I just don't, yeah, you guys would know. I don't think Darby would pick up on this. I feel like he's just be like, yeah, okay, good plan. Uh, sure. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, sound, it sounds like an opportunity. You got to you gotta take advantage of that, man. If you got you got a chance like that to do something you always wanted to do. I'd say chase your dreams. Randy replies to Excavo. Yeah, I mean he he trusts me. He's he's always been building me up, saying that, telling everybody that I'm I'm a big deal, that I'm I'm a really good prince. That like it's it's a big deal to have someone like me in his corner. That like my success is his success. That the fact that I'm so successful reflects really well on him. That I've done so well has helped him like look really good. And I it, casually side eye Archibald okay. in response to his "they're totally gonna kill him" right comment. At, at that, I kind of like look him up and down, and I at all his disheveledness, and I'm like Randy. I can call you Randy, right? You know you're gonna do a you're gonna do great, but you know what? We are gonna need all of the information we can for our special mission. He was right. We are the SEAL Team Six of Vampire, but oh, we need all. God. 
<laughs> we need all the information we can get on what's going on here in uh, the, this town. Here. Well, yeah, that's what we're. I'm, I'm whispering. I'm whispering in our. I, I. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna let you have this. Like, I. I, I know that he's full of shit. I don't want to help support it, but I'm not gonna stand in his way. So this mission, I it miss. sounded so good that you decided to leave. Why leave? What's so great about this mission? Well, I don't I don't know what the mission is yet, but that's So you don't know what you need to pack, what kind of skills? Oh no, I'm packing everything. Like I'm getting all my personal stuff, like I'm I'm moving to the Middle East. All I know is that like I'm like I've been I've been prince here for like forty years. Like I've got I've got a broad range of skills. I'm like an awesome leader. So then why leave? You're so good. Because Will needs me. Our mission, you don't even know what it is. Well, I mean, like, the Camarilla needs me to go. They say they need my skills, and, like, you don't argue with that. You don't say, no, I got shit going on here. It's I'm not in a position to argue. And also... This, this guy's got skills. You need, got Liam Neeson over here, sure. I, what did you, say? you know what? what you said no you what, know what Darby I it's been racking my brain at trying to think of exactly who Randy looks like and it, he is a dead ringer for Liam Neeson just eye rolls complete all right <laughs> back out of the back out of the conversation <laughs> exactly yes so what would it look like if you decided to stay if I if I stuck around in New Kamak where because of me Everything's going to shit. I'll keep feeling like a piece of shit. I'll keep doing a bad job. And whatever they have going on in the Middle East, I guess, won't have me helping it out. I won't have my redemption arc. Wait, I thought you were doing a good job. I was. I thought everybody says, you said you were doing a bad job, and he says you're doing a good job. Wait. What if instead of going to the Middle East, you decided to stay and we work together? Because I assume that you know a lot more about this place than we do. So it wouldn't make sense to have you leave. We well, have valuable information for I us. Can, can I whisper? Not to take over, but to help you. Well, what can I whisper to Excavo and be like, that, well, there is the, the they're going to, to kill him if he does that, or if he's safe, probably, yeah, though. To me. Well, to answer the general... I'm not sure if I know your name. What's the 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 gentleman with the accent? What what's your name? Yeah, hey? yeah, you. Uh, Darby, sir. D- Darby. Darby. Okay. Just just Darby. Do you guys want to change your chat handles? Like on the is in roll oh. twenty camera in it. I it's changed in the chat. I don't know how to change it on here. Um. In your, if you go to settings yeah, and then up at the top, it's display name. Oh, display name. Oh. oh, that's easy. Mr. Mister Darby, I've been Prince for about 40 years of New Camag, and I've been pretty effective, I think. And we reach, at, as we're talking, you reach about the end of, of the corridor, and there's another big metal door. And Randy fumbles with his bottle and his sippy cup and he gets out uh, his keys and he unlocks the door. And as he's talking, he leads you through a basement of Delacroix Manor. It's pretty typical uh, finished basement, except there are a pair of what look like holding cells, like what might be in a prison or a mental health facility in this large basement room uh, immediately to your left as you pass through the basement and up a set of stairs. The holding cells look unoccupied. Randy doesn't remark on them or anything, but he leads you up a set of stairs and into a living room. In this living room, it looks like someone's in the process of, of moving out. There are a lot of boxes all over. Just go into a nice farm upstate. I'm sure he'll be fine. You see uh, boxes of clothes stacked up, uh, things labeled uh, with like what rooms they're going to go in. And you see on the walls a bunch of artwork and a bunch of pictures of Randy over the last few decades. But it looks like a very different Randy. 
the Randolph Delacroix portrayed in all these pictures doesn't look like the person you've been interacting with tonight. It looks like a very composed, poised, professional person who actually looks like a like a damn good prince. I, I can't help but under my breath, just to myself, I say, damn, that's a good looking Randy. <laughs> Uh, he's wearing bespoke suits. He's he's posing with uh, other dignitary looking people. In a lot of them, he's he's holding like cocktails, but he doesn't look drunk. He doesn't look fucked up. He looks like he's he has in fact had a, a long successful career. Randy continues. So I've been Prince for like forty years, and everything's gone really great, but something. Just this last year has been a year from hell, and I don't understand what it is, but everything, everything's been falling apart, and I don't understand why. And things that used to be challenges that I was ready to face have been too much for me. They've been scary to me. They've been too much, and I can't, I can't do it. And it's just been this past year. Where did it start? Where did it start? What did something happen? I mean, I don't know if it was any particular thing, but just I haven't been the same this past year, and I can't pin it down to any particular thing, but like the whole city, it's not the same city anymore. And I could list off a bunch of problems. We mm-hmm. have... Do you guys, That would be great if you would, yeah. We have a gangrel who's gone apparently feral and started draining mortals and leaving their bodies in public. And normally I know how to handle that problem, but I keep, I kept putting it off and a bruja has had to step in and take charge. And he went off to find the gangrel and now both of them are missing. And that was like a week or two ago. And normally I'd have a half dozen Nosferatu working as my spies and my muscle, but they all left the city long ago, like like last fall. My sheriff left me a note saying that there's something underground that scared them all off and that there's Sabat moving into the city. So now, now the only kindred left that haven't gone missing are me, Jeffrey, the DJ, and the three Tremere, and and maybe Sabat. I don't even know. I used to be. I used to be on top. Wait, 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 wait a minute. That's all that's left. That's it for the whole city. And and you guys. I mean, I think I used to keep track of this stuff. I used to know feeding territories, and. Everyone coming in and out, but like I just stopped. Just open, open, open disgust for this guy now from Darby. Like Darby is just like really disgusted at how this has gotten out of hand for him. This place used to be like Saturday Night Live. People would start out here and have a great time and get successful and move on to get bigger and better vampire careers elsewhere. You know my old harpy ghouled one of the Kardashians, like recently. <laughs> mm, but like one. But like Rob, like yeah. not not oh, any of the not any of the women. Can't, can't brag about that one. But like there used to be a ton of kindred in the city. Wait, 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 you said you said there's something underground. Yeah. Have you checked that out? You said there's something underground, I'm and that's good, why I'm not going under there. Kindred are leaving. That's that's why all the Nosferatu left. The Nosferatu used to take care of so much for me. They were my muscle. That was my that was my sheriff. They used to do all the spying. That was how I got all my intel. And you're I, too scared to go down there. Yeah. And wow. your your muscle also too scared. They left. Well, so, how did you even get to be prince anyway? Damn. My. I, I my just sire. Start, just look at him, Darby. My sire was the old prince, and I, I was her seneschal. So, 
<laughs> got it got it handed to you down well from the chain? not exactly i mean i was a good seneschal when you're getting told what to do damn you can't tell us anything you lost track of the whole damn city. So they're no... Oh, we don't know shit. They're asking us to run it. Oh, man. So there are no advisors? There's nobody that you leaned on to still here? Oh, I it's mean, the, the Tremere... Okay, the, the head of the Tremere, his name's Leslie Lane. I, th- I have a feel I'm getting a hostile tone. I think this will go a lot smoother if, if we were all drinking. Let me get... I was like- actually yeah let me get a drinks for for all of you and uh he he searches around and he he finds he finds a little little handheld bell and he rings a bell ling, 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 ling. and a woman uh walks into the room named jade dewitt and he goes this is jade dewitt she is uh, my personal assistant she is a ghoul she- she's she's my ghoul She's going to be sticking around for a while. She'll she'll be probably helping with like housekeeper stuff. Uh, once I'm settled in the Middle East and I know where I'm going to be staying and if it's going to be safe for her, I'm going to be sending for her and she's going to be moving over with me, everything. Uh, she's my long-term ghoul. I'm going to be embracing her at some point in the future. Jade, honey, could you please uh, go out to the garage? Get some some blood bags, and uh, please serve our guests uh, some some blood with uh, some alcohol in it. What uh, we have a, a pretty good bar here. What is your alcohols of choices, uh, each of you? Dealer's choice. Now I'm, I'm really surprised that Darby wasn't like Bud Light or something. Now I remind I, I remind Steve that his character Darby. Actually, no, will not. will not be able to imbibe this unless. Oh yeah, if, yeah. Good call. Good call. Unless if there is, I, I, I probably couldn't have taken that sip that I took earlier. Oh yeah, he would have to. Uh, I don't know, spit it out or something. Unless if it has his. I didn't really think that through, or adventure. I could just like dump some meth in it because I have I have some meth blood. If I if I mix it myself, I, I reckon. Ah, I could. How much meth <laughs> needs to be in there to? Huh. Some, yeah. some, as yeah. long as there's some, a, a detectable mm-hmm. amount, not like you know, like, um, like beakers and <laughs> what's, what's that fake science. <laughs> Jade turns to uh, science. You make it. <laughs> Jade turns to Augustine. It says, uh, "What would you like in your drink?" Just rum, please. And to uh, Excava, what would you like in your drink, ma'am? Uh, um, it's it's been a long day. I'd like some scotch. And to uh, uh, Darby, uh, he's a he's a dealer's choice. He said, uh, I, "I'd like your recommendation." And to Archibald, oh, I hate to be a pain since ev- everybody else chose different things. But that uh, gin and tonic, hold the tonic, and put <laughs> blood in there instead. Thanks. I believe. In- <laughs> so gin. <laughs> Yes, Jim. She, she, Jim. she looks at you very slightly annoyed it's, it's, and says, "So, Jim?" Like, huh? <laughs> uh, yes, thank you, Jane. Okay, she she Darby turns around. <laughs> can I ask like an out of the? Can I ask like a player question as myself? Sure. Yeah, meta gaming. Um, they mentioned like yeah, let's meta game real quick. Um, they mentioned like how there's only like five vampires in town, like. In this world, like, what's the average? Because that, like, low. I think we're assuming that's low. But like, are there supposed to be like a ton of vampires? There is a like a a ratio of vampires per people that uh, that White Wolf, the company that that makes Vampire the Masquerade, uh, I think occasionally puts out, and I think this changes depending on which version of the game you're using. And I don't remember what it is. I think I've seen like a vampire per, I don't know, like 10,000 people or something. It's something it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a really like really skewed ratio is like the safe ratio. Otherwise that's like the masquerade safe ratio. Otherwise it's too many 
vampires. But yeah, I I don't know. I think if you, once you're trying to answer questions like that, it gets to a bit too in the weeds. Um, but like, regardless of numbers, we should take that to mean like there's an abysmally small one and something yeah, we should. No we usually expect every clan to be represented in a, in a big yeah. City. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. But that's not. Darby, I think, was like, wow, that that. Yeah. So so Jade leaves and goes goes outside to the to the aforementioned cooler of blood in a garage that Randy mentioned and Randy continues. So yeah, everything's just kind of gone to shit and I think yeah, you guys were brought in to like fix stuff and I can't I can't do it and what's what's happening is in the morning I'm going to be in that thing. And he points to an almost phone phone booth sized safe that is set up next to the front door. And Randy points to it and he says that right there, when I have to travel, especially internationally, I use this thing. That is, that's actually a gun safe that's used for like long rifles and stuff. So what I do is I just crawl in that thing and I close it behind me. There's a little lever inside so I can get out. I've got I've got two two people that work closely with me. I got Jade who's my ghoul and she knows all about, you know, vampire stuff. Um I've got a dayminder. Uh he's immortal. Uh his name is his name is Harvey. He's uh he's closer to like my janitor he's he's harvey the janitor and he does a lot of work for me during the day he is going to be coming by in the morning and doing a whole bunch of moving stuff he's been told that there's going to be this safe set up by the door and he's going to take a little little hand cart and he's going to load this thing onto a truck and then load it onto a plane and then it's going to be sent off to an address in, uh, I think, Israel. And I'm going to be inside it. And that's going to protect me from the sun and stuff. So at the end of tonight... It I'm sounds just, really safe. Yeah, exactly. And then no one's going to be... I'm going to be asleep during the day. And no one's going to be able to tamper with it or anything. And like I said, they, they made these things... possibly go wrong? They made these things so they so could be... So you've known about your trip for a while now? Uh, for like two days, hmm. or like a day and a half. Kind of sudden after forty years. Yeah, like real sudden. What's he said? <laughs> you know, Randy. I think that sounds great. Everybody deserves a nice vacation. So, uh, but if you could just give us all of the information we need, we'd be happy to take care of it for you. Well, you guys should probably have that uh, that note that Bagger gave me. The note? The no- yeah, oh. give us a note. Um, Why is this? Bagger was my old sheriff. The Nosferatu guy. The Nosferatu. Let me, uh, let me get it. And he, Randy walks into his study. You can follow him into the study. Does anyone do that? Am I next to him? I mean... Yeah, yeah, I'd probably no. follow him in there. No. I can barely contain my joy at the fact that I get to go into his study. Uh, in his study, you see a bunch of things laid out on a desk. You see four uh, large decorative coins laid out. You see four smartphones laid out. And you see a bunch of paperwork laid out and a pen obviously laid out so that in preparation for like someone to, to sign something. Randy rifles through a drawer and he pulls out uh, this note. Uh, would anyone like to read it out loud? Feels like that should go in Darby's voice. It's almost written in, in Darby speak. Uh, Take it away, Darby. Since your voicemail is full and I can't get you to answer your calls or texts, I'm leaving this note. I kept trying to talk about your problem, but you blow me off. I don't get you anymore. You're different than you used to be. Before, 
you'd have taken care of something like this right away. Now, our problem's too big. It's not safe underground here for us anymore. Someone else digging big tunnels with equipment deep underground for months, and they ain't stopping. Mortals doing some infrastructure work across the city. That's fucking up no warrants. Coming close to exposing us. Those got to all leave the city tonight. Can't risk my people. Found my mortals rooting around in day hours when we sleep. I don't know about you, but masquerade still means something to us. We collapsed a bunch of tunnels on our way out and put up barricades to keep the mortals out best we could. But the mortals cut us out from the tunnel that leads us to our surveillance room before we could go in and back it up. We had to bail and leave it all behind. Should probably send someone down there to destroy or secure that room before people find it. Go in, storm drain behind Nuker Deck. Take south, keep going straight, and look for a tunnel on the left. That'll eventually get you to the surveillance room if you don't mind getting messy and crossing a new gap. Sorry, I gotta bounce. Take my people someplace safer. One last piece of intel. Looks like you got a sabot pack moving into the city. A biker game called the Unholy Rollers has been looking for land to buy on the southeast side and selling crystal. Better stomp that out before they stomp you out. Bagger. P.S. We couldn't take our ghoul gator Wally with us, which shouldn't be a problem. He'll probably just die because no one's feeding him. R.I.P. Wally. He's a good boy. Aww. Uh, Jade walks into the room and hands each of you uh, all of your drinks. Each of you gets hungry. Two two blood points from that. I'll say I what, what do I have to spend like a, a half a point or do I have to spend all of my uh, my meth blood to to drink this? Uh, how much do I have to mix in? I just want to be polite. I don't know how how did you collect? What was your uh, I feel like we talked through this, but I don't remember how we how we concluded that this was a, that this was a mechanic that I would be able to just uh, have a have a supply ready to go. Did you have like a flask of blood or something that you collected from? Just like a Ziploc bag, you know, stapled together. I don't really know how, how Darby would figure out this type of problem. How about this? I'm Maybe gonna, let's not get into it. I'm going to replace that whole mechanic idea with. How about this? The you have the the luck merit. It it happened to to work out this way. You you lucked out when you ducked out of Club Wonderland. You happened to find someone who was on meth and had meth on them at the time. Uh, mm. You stole a little bit of meth <laughs> from them. You <coughs> you had a little bit. Uh, you pocketed well, knowing some that of this is and, knowing that this is how I would have to like use it or operate in vampire society i feel like it is plausible that i would also acquire meth itself while taking a sip yeah let's say at the moment you you sprinkled some meth uh on the on the oh, rim oh, of your yeah. glass uh nice. just turning the glass upside down in the meth you know getting a nice rim on there so generous so kind let's say <laughs> let's say at the moment you're you're getting away with that is how you were you're drinking that. I never thought I'd say so generous, so kind from somebody mm. offering a friend meth tainted blood. <laughs> Anybody else want to try this? <laughs> no. It is. It has got some kick. <laughs> no. It's a it's a hard no for me, Fred. So Darby is now in possession of that note from Sheriff Bagger. Okay. okay. So pocketed. We need to. It is in my right cargo pocket. <laughs> what else? What else is on that table that we we're supposed to take? I'm not in the room. I don't think it's been to explain to us yet. Like certainly, the prince hasn't told us about the contracts or whatever else. Randy says, uh, "Oh, this reminds me." He calls everybody into the study. Could uh, yeah, could everybody get in here? I, I do have have presents to to share with everyone. I enter the room. I'm ready to learn presence. I quietly slink in behind everybody else. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. Okay, I wanted to make sure that everybody has cell phones. I got these four 
new clean smartphones. So here they are. And he passes out four smartphones to, to each of you. Each of these has uh, a local news app uh, that's uh, pre-installed on it. Do you guys take take the phones? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I thought he was handing them to us. I, I, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, no. We, we t- I take them. I, you know, does it... Do I have to... I'm not sure how uh, tech savvy Darby is. And I need... Also... Uh, something very special that I want to give you guys. I guess this is, since this is the end of my, my reign as, as Prince here, this is my last opportunity to give these out. And he picks up the, the four large coins and he holds them in his hand and kind of clinks them around. (sighs) All right. You guys get the last four Prince Delacroix, New Kamak challenge coins. And he hands... How much are these worth? I don't know. I like to believe that they're priceless. On the, fr- <laughs> on the front of each coin, there is the, the Toreador symbol, which is a rose, and the name Delacroix in a gothic font, and a mm-hmm. Latin phrase around the edge. Mm-hmm. And on the back is a rough uh, map of New Kamak. What's the Latin phrase? Aperium in Portu Satis Tudo Vabis... Adam necessitate, comma cum. Can you put that in the chat? <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> Is it? Do you do you want to use your new smartphone to just use Google Translate? Well, because I can I just tell you. Because <laughs> I can just tell you what the results are in character. Sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, uh, let's pretend. Okay, let, uh, my character would probably be able to type on a phone faster than I. Excavo very quickly uses some optical character recognition app on the coin and a translation app to determine that the coin says in Latin, a safe haven will open up to you when you are in need. I um, lean over to Darby and say, how did she type that so fast? I mean, I, I don't know how to work this thing. It's so I'm, yeah, I am like holding it wrong and like just in awe. Like, I don't yeah. know. We, Damn. We're both, we're staring at I'm like, this is way different than my Motorola Razor I had back at home. Yeah, I'm like trying to flip it, even though it's not a flip phone. <laughs> things, are, things are not going great. <clears throat> okay, we don't have to do this right now, but all this paperwork... <gasps> He takes another what sip. What's that paperwork? What is this? He takes another sip from his, his sippy cup and he, he spill, paperwork, you say? spill fills. We already like signed our souls away. Spill fills. One fifty one eleven himself. I'm as excited about paperwork as as Excavo was about the phones. This paperwork is for the new prince to sign that will give ownership of the the LLC that owns uh, all of my real estate, which includes Club Wonderland and uh, Delacroix Manor. There's also room for other signatories to be co-owners of the LLC. Uh, Paperwork will also give ownership of all my vehicles and uh, Harvey the janitor will come by to pick up the paperwork in the morning and copy it and mail it off to where it needs to go. So it just needs signatures and boom, that's it. Um, all these properties will continue to have their utilities and property taxes paid for automatically. So you don't got to worry about any of that shit. So yeah, who, who's the prince in? I don't think we got a rush to determine that just now. I kind of think maybe, maybe we should talk to the Tremere and like introduce you guys to them first and maybe they'd have a good idea of like who that should be. What? <laughs> Whatever. It's not like there's any bias at play there. Let's go. Yes. Uh, Aren't they just going to pick tree guy? May- oh, yeah. Tree, tree, near tree guy. Oh, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it was just a pun, but. Whatever works. For I think you. you're onto something. I, I think I think you might be you might be onto something with that. I don't think we can trust them. Anyway, let's go over to to there. Sure, whatever we need to do. I I just want to get this year over with. <laughs> Under protest. All the while this conversation's happening, I'm generally kind of like 
trying to inconspicuously look around. What is the building like that... What, what are our surroundings? In the living room, how do you find out about the surrounding area? I'm just casually looking while everyone's distracted talking with each other. Are you staying in the same room? Yeah. Okay. I'm just generally observing what's around us. And I the only thing in particular I'm looking for is any non-humanoid life in the room. Looking for plants and stuff like that? Inside the yeah. room? In, in, yeah, in our immediate vicinity and generally trying to pick up on everything else around us. You're turning on your, your Tremere sense of like anything weird and creepy. Um, I'm like whispering to Archibald like, he's looking for plants. Anything weird and, and creepy. Give me an intelligence plus awareness roll difficulty of eight intelligence plus awareness awareness is the skill having to do with picking up on supernatural things being around you so it's one die per point and i have to get an eight or higher to pass yes correct i succeed once one success wow you can tell that there is something magical in the corner of the living room it's hard to pinpoint what exactly is the magical thing but you can tell it's something in the corner when you look in the corner you see a box that appears to be full of clothes you see a table that has a chess set set up that looks dusty that has a stack of papers next to it and you see a painting on the wall and you see a couple photographs of randy with fancy looking people on the wall and you see a chair with a collection of remote controls on it in this corner hoping that everyone's kind of generally distracted with their conversation i'm gonna just kind of like Without saying a word, walk over to that corner and just kind of stand there. I mean, yeah, if- you walked in a different room. A different room? Yeah, we're in the study with the contract and the phones. Ah. Yeah, this is yeah. visible from the from the study, though. If that makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I still walk to that corner in the living room then. I'm just going to you know, have a look-see. See if I feel anything different. You can definitely tell that there's... Yeah, something something in this corner has some sort of occult significance to it. Okay. And then we're just going to wordlessly walk back into the study and tune back into what everyone else was talking about. No further investigation of the spooky corner? <laughs> Every man who needs one. Uh, I'm, sure, I'll look for it. So I'm going to check for anything that would be obviously occult. All of those things seem like normal objects. I mean, nothing jumps out and screams at you. Like, you don't see any voodoo dolls or scrying pools or crystal balls or anything like that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab the stack of disheveled papers and take a quick gander at those. Is there anything interesting on them? All of those are uh, their correspondence. It's a stack of envelopes and a stack of letters all of them are addressed to Randy. And all of the letters, uh, they have code on them. Is there any chance that Augustine is a chess player? Oh, man. I am, like, itching to get in here right now. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, his time has never devo- uh, allowed him to devote any mastery of chess. But... Well, then the codes on the letters might be quite mysterious to Augustine. There's a different code on each letter, but there's no other message on the letter, just a a mysterious code as if a move in a game that got mailed to Randy and each letter is signed with just a single letter F in calligraphy and then a stamp that looks like a black chess knight. You do, however, pretty easily notice the very telltale signs of a ritual at play, 
some sort of magic ritual that uh, was involved in the construction of these letters. You can tell in the construction of the paper and the particular quality of the ink that was used and even little things like symbols and patterns pressed into the paper that other people might not notice, but a Tremere would notice. These letters that were sent to Randy were part of some sort of ritual. Now give me an intelligence plus cult check. Again, difficulty eight. Ooh, you should turn on 3D dice. Can I ask real quick, do we see him doing this or are we just in the other room? We can't you, see him? you could notice that he yeah, is doing he something do- in the corner. You could have line of sight that he's he's doing something in the corner over here. Can I see that he's like, can I see the chessboard? Yeah. Okay. Archibald's huge into chess. I have a specialization in games of strategy. Oh, I'd yeah. never thought in a million years this scenario would come up. So can I really <laughs> kind of be like, ooh, is that a... I say like, ooh, is that a chess set? Uh, are, are you... Uh, do you play Augustine? Uh, would you... We'll have to play a game sometime since it uh, looks like we'll be here for a bit. She's just trying to make friends with everybody. <laughs> you, you notice that the chess set kind of stands out because... You can tell that the whole house is is well maintained. It's despite the the disarray that comes from uh, Randy really hastily packing everything up to uh, to move. The house is cleaned. It's dusted. This chess set, however, has a really noticeable layer of dust on it, as if it has been a long time, many months since anyone has touched it and as if randy has uh, explicitly said don't touch that don't dust it and for some reason it is the one part of the house that is allowed to collect dust oddly it's it's the only part of the house that is dusty i'm gonna go ahead and take the correspondence and tuck them into one of my pockets as Hopefully not balled up and organized and flat as I can. Well, generally kind of check it to make sure that Randy is still not seeing me. Okay. Uh, how that intelligence plus occult uh, roll go? I only got one success. I don't think you got there. Unless you got a, unless you got a specialty. You got one success uh, at a difficulty of eight? Yep. Uh, it's a ten. Oh. Um, that's just enough for you to. Pick I don't up think on. so. Hang on, hang on. Like I, I hate to root against the team here, but he also had a one. Doesn't that cancel out his success? It does cancel it out. Yes. So I think there's no successes over eight on his roll, unfortunately, unless he has a specialization, in which case the crit would count for two. I'm not sure if if a Tremere get an occult specialization, that would not surprise me, actually, in which case this would still count as a successful role. Unfortunately, you get no more information about the nature of this ritual other than this, which you pick up on without a test pretty easily. The nature of this magic Reminds you a lot of the blood contract that the four of you signed earlier tonight. It's not the same thing, but the the pattern of the ritual and the way that it works, what you see in the letters and the way that the magic is woven into the paper and the way that it mechanically works, it's not a blood contract but it shares mechanically some things in common with a blood contract. That's pretty much all that you can pick up on. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely going to stash those papers in my pocket and hope no one sees. Aside from, of course, uh, Archibald here, who, again, I ambiguously side-eye and... As if to say, shush. Yeah, when they left, I did. Did they leave? Did you guys leave behind your smartphones? 
Uh, my phone's in my pocket. Mm. Okay. Yeah, everyone should have coins and headphones now. <clears throat> I was going to take any of them that were left behind and start installing things that I think that they need <laughs> on their phones to be safe in this this <laughs> year, our Lord. I don't know. <laughs> Is anyone curious about the, the state of the, the chessboard? I am. Is it like mid-game? I'm not in the room. Uh, it is not in mid game. Um, okay, I'm still, I'm still very. My interest is peaked. I'm trying to. I'm itching to get a game in. Black is in checkmate. Oh, okay. Uh, Randy uh, pokes his head out of the study and says, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" Oh, sorry, man. I uh, I, I was just so intrigued by your illustrious poem that. I was, I was trying to get a gander. My, well, I'm sorry for the weirdness. It is and a I, pretty nice home. It's only one story, which uh, is is unfortunate. Uh, but we've got like uh, we've got like 15 acres. It's all forest, so I don't know. There's a lot of room to develop. Um, so there's no neighbors, so there's a lot of privacy. I I bring it up uh, and I say like, oh, it's a shame about Black's position here. I hope uh, you were playing white, Randy. He looks very obviously crestfallen about it. Uh, uh, no, 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 I wasn't. Uh, no, I was doing a well, can't win them all. I was doing a correspondence game. Oh, how would you like to correspond from the Middle East? No, I'm thinking I don't want to play chess anymore. No, that very well. I'm thinking chess is chess is stupid. <laughs> you know, people people say this whole thing that we're doing is chess, like we're all pawns in someone else's game, and I'm starting you to think especially. that. That's, I, I'm thinking that's right. So that's when you have to continue to learn the game. I'm starting to think that, like, I used to think I was good at chess, and now I'm thinking if someone challenges you to any kind of game, maybe don't play it because maybe they're trying to get you to play because they know they're going to beat you. If someone tries to get you to play a game, what I think you should do is just not be playing that game. Like, bring a baseball bat to a chess game, you know? Just always be playing a different game than they than they think they're challenging you to. I think that only works when you're a step ahead. Yeah. Like, be a step ahead or a step beside. But don't... I kind of don't want to talk about it, but... No, that that game didn't work out for me. All that good. I give him a gentle pat on the shoulder. Empathetic. Empathetically. And he starts. Uh, I I whisper to Darby, and I'm like, you know, the the way he's talking about this makes it seem like it's super pertinent to this whole situation going on. <laughs> he start. <laughs> Randy starts just like drinking really aggressively. <laughs> I'm like, this is <laughs> well, all right. Ask him about. It. He wants you to ask him about it. For for, for God's sake, just, who were you playing the game against, bro? Way to be. Thank you, thank you for asking, Darby. I'm too. I'm much too shy. I don't know. I thought that. I thought that if if I beat her, I would get to meet her, and I didn't beat her, and then I didn't. I thought it was a girl trying to like flirt with me. And I've all been there the way I don't even know if it was a girl, but the fancy way she signed her name, I thought it was like a romantic overture or something. Yeah. And I thought it was someone who was like, I don't know. I got, I don't know why I got my hopes up so much, but like, I thought it was someone who wanted to, I I thought something really cool was going to happen. And then, she beat me and then just it felt like the bottom dropped out of me like just my whole soul went away 
and I never, I never even met her. I don't even know who she was. I don't, I, I, it's stupid. I feel stupid about how affected I was by it, but when, uh, when, when did that happen? This is, this is months ago. Was it, a, uh, don't mind us prying, but was it like around maybe exactly the time the thing started to go south around here? He, no, it was before things started to go south around <laughs> here. This is like right before. Yeah, like nothing had uh-huh. gone bad around here until after. Randy, are you a uh-huh. fan of, of Goethe by any chance? Is that a kind of like soft cheese? It kind of like it's kind of like that. Uh, does the term Faustian bargain mean anything to you? That's where like you buy something on a credit card and then you get like <laughs> points. You might have it, to explain it to me. It's like, um, well, in the in a sense, uh, credit card companies are so different. Uh, it, it means a deal with the devil. Have you ever heard of a deal with the devil? Yeah. 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 Like, do you think there might have been uh, just one of these kinds of situations going on? The devil? It, Darby does not get get it and is definitely just feeling sorry for you thinking that you got dumped. Like led led on by a girl. <laughs> and once again I am on I am on your team. Like I, I have come back around to being on your side and because I feel bad that a, a woman has led you astray and I can relate to that. Like I don't get I don't get so, what you're implying. I think you well, did you ever see the that Swedish film? I don't know if you're a fan of Swedish cinema. Uh, Only the, the, the Muppet. Are these breakup movies that you're talking about? Well, this man is heartbroken. Breakup okay, sense. you're trying to give him a, a, a philosophy lesson. This man needs a, 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 a nice another drink, probably, and, and, and just a friend spills maybe. rum all over himself and blood. He's got he's got it figured out. He's on the right track already. To be fair, most got, people tell me that, that rum is. Effective than my lectures. You're right. What is going on? Honestly, I don't. I don't really understand what's what you're even implying. But I really. Don't, I don't want to talk about. How'd you them. get? How'd you get in touch with this uh, mystery woman? How'd she? How'd she get your attention in the first place? I just got a letter, and it had an opening move. Did it have a picture? Because she must be real hot to have you shaking up like this. No. No, it just it, had what? an opening move, and that was it. I don't even really so, know that it was. It just I don't know. It's, like sometimes you can tell from the handwriting. I just assumed it was a it was a woman. You saw, you only saw the letter. Yeah. You never saw any titties. I assumed I would, like if I won, the game. Oh man, that why. I was back on your side, and now I am once again disgusted and appalled. Can we see the letter? Yeah, they're, uh, well, they were. (laughs) (laughs) You totally blew up his spot. (laughs) Oh, no, that was in character voice. That wasn't in character voice. Wow. Well, the letters, well, they were right here by the. By the by, the chessboard. <laughs> I, I just remained sheepishly in the back of the room. <laughs> no, someone must have moved them. I'm I'm sure they were just uh, trying to help f- figure out w- what was going on because this is very uh, strange. <clears throat> so it's it's okay that someone looked at them and is probably still looking at them. You know, if you ask me, I think. This is all very pertinent to our situation. Maybe we, we should get uh, Miss DeWitt in here and ask if, if maybe she moved the letters elsewhere. <laughs> hey, Jade. I, uh, what is happening? And Jade comes in. Hey, Jade. Uh, did you did you move the uh, the the letters the the chess 
chess letters? Oh, for and she was like, out loud. she was like, no, no, absolutely. I would not do that. I mean, it's, that's a big deal. I would not touch them. I mean, you snap at me whenever I get close to that thing. So no, no, absolutely not. You know, obviously, I mean, they're, they must be misplaced, but you know, if we ever find them, I would, I guess we only have until tomorrow morning, but I'd love to give you some pointers and tips. I don't think you should give up on the game after one loss there, bud. <laughs> yeah, that's how you <laughs> I kind of don't want to play anymore. Well, I want to introduce you guys around, and there's yeah, just, there's just the Tremere <laughs> left. So do you guys want to meet the Tremere at the Chantry? Yes. Yes, fine. Uh, I guess. Yes. What does that word mean? As he turns to lead us there, I give one of these side eyes to Archibald. I I don't think I noticed you taking the letter, so I'm super confused. <laughs> I I think Darby noticed it, but uh, is still was unable to communicate. <laughs> he thought Augustine should just come clean about having them, so gave up. So we're probably following him to the Chantry. Yes. Randy uh, grabs a set of keys from a set of hooks by the front door. You see the, there's a set of keys, there's a bunch of keys on the hooks by the front door and they're all labeled. Uh, they have weird names, like they're, there's a set of keys labeled Short Bus, there's a set of keys labeled Bertha, there's a set of keys labeled Whirly Bird. There's a set of keys labeled Double Trouble. And a set of keys labeled Petey. P-E-T-E-Y. He grabs the keys labeled Petey. And he and he walks out the door. He says, all right, uh, which one of you is driving? It's not me. This guy. It tosses, him to, tosses him to Darby. Right here, boss. Grabs him out of the air. Okay. This. Wields them handily, looks very practiced, and gets into the driver's seat of whatever vehicle. You notice that the, the set of keys is purple. Randy says, a shotgun, and he runs and he jumps into the middle of the back seat of a purple 2010 Chrysler PT Cruiser. And, and then stabs <laughs> the rear hand and drinks it all at once. The Darby is so disappointed when he sees the car. <laughs> Just totally heartbroken at the car. This car uh, this car is parked alongside the house, which now that you get outside the house, you see that it is there is it's mostly forest. Uh pretty much as, as far as as you can see. You can in one direction you see the lights of the city, but it's it's mostly you're, you're mostly pretty isolated uh, from the city. You are parked alongside a motorcycle with an attached sidecar. Also, not far from it, uh, in a little clearing, there is a, uh, there's a large tarp, and underneath it is the shape of a helicopter. Randy is still with his uh, Bacardi 151 bottle and his, uh, his sippy cup, which he's still aggressively drinking from, uh, buckling himself into the middle of the back seat of this whoa, 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 uh, PT Cruiser. Whoa, 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 whoa. There is a helicopter, but Randy wants to fly commercial. <laughs> hey, uh, I didn't even know they still made these things. Are you sure this is the car you want to you want to take? Because I, I could I could drive. It's man. real. We could let loose, my man. Like uh, this, this your ride. We can. Oh, you got a. We could take your. We could walk back to Club Wonderland, and then drive, drive your, um, drive your ride to, oh, if you want to. What do you mean? I love this color. We're here now. Let's just go. Okay. Uh, grumbles and gets behind the wheel of the PT Cruiser. That's my character. Vintage it's, 02 it's purple. It's Petey. It's my buddy Petey. 
I, I put it right into gear drive, I believe it's called. And, um, I, I asked where we're going. Uh, Randy, uh, gives you, uh, an address for the, uh, for the challenge tree. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, Excavo just recommended using a GPS. I have pulled out my challenge coin and I am looking at the small map on there trying to figure it out and help give Darby. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, Randy starts giving you, giving you directions. Yeah. Go down. Yeah. Go down here. It's really easy. He, he, he gives you an address, but also gives you just directions and you're driving through the city on your way to the Chantry. As you're heading downtown, there is traffic starts getting a little backed up and you notice that the arms lowering ahead on uh, blocking, the blocking, uh, here? blocking the train tracks and there's a train crossing uh, the road ahead of you uh, that stops, grinds to a halt and you are stuck behind a handful of, of cars. Wow then a very curious thing happens. You start to hear the sound of uh, a band. You start to hear a few woodwind instruments and the sound of hand cymbals being played and a few, and the sound of a snare drum. Uh, Some like a live band is playing just somewhere nearby and you can't hear it, but, or you can't see it, but but you can hear it. And, after about a minute, you, you see that there are four guys dressed in like formal suits, like they're members of an orchestra, and they are walking alongside the train tracks, and they're playing instruments that they're holding. The guy with uh, a snare drum is, is wearing it on a sling over him, and they're, they're, they're walking alongside the train tracks, And when they get to right in front of the cars, they turn and they're facing the cars and they're playing a little song. And when they finish playing this song, they start approaching the cars and talking to them. Randy leans up from the back seat and he's like, oh, yeah, okay, these guys, um... This is a thing you're gonna have to deal with. These, this is, this is, uh, this is a gang. The these are orcs. Uh, the uh, um, uh, the gang. They're they're called the orchestra, and the guys are the, the guys are are orcs. Um, just get your wallets out and just hang tight. What what wallets? They took they took all our things. No, you, yeah, you guys. Yeah, we don't. You, no, you guys don't have any money. Wants. So you you see these four gentlemen walk up to the first car in the line, and they all surround it. And the first guy sort of leans in, and the driver like rolls his window down, and the orc says something to the driver, and you can't really hear what it is. And then the other three are sort of like leaning in the doors and like staring in the windows and you can't really, they're too far away and you can't really hear what's going on, but they're having some sort of confrontation. And then that wraps up and they move on to the next car and it's too far away for you to hear. But as they get closer to you, you start to be able to, to hear, to hear the exchange. Hello, ma'am. Uh, sorry about the train. There's a, a car that died on the tracks at the next intersection. We're the new Kamek Train Yard Orchestra. We work for the train yard, and we're here to entertain you while the train's not moving. We accept donations for our time and trouble. And as, as he says this, he sort of puts out a hand. Uh, and you all see uh, the driver of the car uh, get out their wallet, start going through it, Take out all of the bills in their wallet and hand it to this to this uh, orc, and then he moves on to the next car. Uh, same pitch. He says, uh, "Hello, sir. Uh, so sorry. Uh, the train there it ran out of gas, and we're waiting for the train AAA. But while we wait, we thought we would play you a song. We're the new Kamek Train Yard Orchestra. 
We work for the train yard here, and we're here to entertain you. We accept donations. And this this driver starts to starts to sort of argue. Over yeah, it. yeah. I don't I don't think that that song was was all that that good. I've I've heard better. I I don't, I don't think I gotta pay you anything for that. Well, you make a good point, sir. Uh, unfortunately, we spent all our money on anger management classes for Crash over here. Uh, Crash, how are those anger management classes going? And you see the guy with the symbols, and he just goes. Ugh. And uh, then you see the guy with the oboe who's been talking this whole time, and he goes, "Well, I don't, I don't know that they're going that well. Uh, we, we might need a little bit more money for those anger management classes. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want us to miss out on those anger management classes, would you? What's, what's gonna, what's gonna happen if you miss one of those classes?" And as he says that, uh, Crash just hits his symbol against the window, and the window shatters. Oh. oh sh- uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I, can, I think I could spare some, spare some money. I hope these classes aren't, uh, aren't that expensive. Here's, uh, here's, I, I got forty bucks. I could probably get them into a class, right? Darby's getting visibly upset watching this go down. I, I am I'm already upset watching the car in front of us go through this exchange. And and uh, before the- before they get here, I lean over to Darby and I say. Hey, be cool. Be smart. This is, about this. Hey, this ain't right, man. Hey, this this ain't right. That's all I know. Randy, Randy yeah. leans up to Darby and says, "It's it's really not worth. Just just let them. They just want money. They don't really. It's fine. You yeah, got some, you got enough for them, Randy. Dar- Are you Dar- funding this whole enterprise? Yeah, I got Dar- I got money. You might let me do the okay. All right. Hey, hey, let let Randy pay for it. That's fine. I'll I'll be cool. So uh, by now they've sort of moved on to the the next car. They walk up and they give their pitch, and the uh, orc that's been talking this whole time, he sort of he says, "Oh, so sorry, so sorry, ma'am, sorry about the uh, train. You know, the driver is having an emotional breakdown, uh, and and while we let him work through that, we're we're just we're gonna play for you a little bit. Uh, we're the new Kamek Orchestra, and and we take donations." Hmm. Oh. Well, the, well, that was that was actually a very nice song. Well, here you go, gentlemen. Ugh. And you uh, you see the you see the the orc take take the dollar and uh, hmm that's that's weird. Uh, would you would you mind handing me that back? Ha- handing you handing you what back? <laughs> well, see, it's the weirdest thing because right as you were giving me this bullshit five dollar tip, I think I saw a couple of my twenties fall into your wallet. Could you could you give those back to me? What, oh, what, 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 I, 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 I said there are my twenties in your wallet. I don't know how the fuck they ended up there, uh, but you better give them back right now. Look, I know what you're doing. You're trying to steal from me, and don't think that I'm going to be intimidated. I'll call the police. And at the mention of the police, this man just starts uh, guffawing loudly. And he says, you hear that, boys? You hear that, everybody? Uh, this one's going to call the police on us uh, for stealing my money. She's going to call the police on us. Uh, you know, why don't you go ahead and call the cops? Uh, I'm sure they'll get here really quickly, what with this traffic backed up. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not exactly sure how an ambulance would get up here either. They, 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 they could maybe just drive in the lane that's not blocked. They could, if they weren't on the other side of the tracks. And as he says that, you see him sort of push a button on his oboe, and the other end of it starts to spark with electricity. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Here, here's here's all my money. What? What was that? What what the hell was that? No, oh, good thing the boss made us some toys to deal with people like you. Uh, I would say get the hell out of here, but you're not going anywhere. And he laughs, and one of the other orcs just crashes a side view mirror and pops a tire, and they move on to the next car. I hate this country. 
<laughs> Are they to us yet? <laughs> uh, so now they're about one car in front of you. Okay. And they walk Just... up to the next car. I'm pro- I, I probably have like a, like a hand-shaped indents in the steering wheel. I'm just really <laughs> upset watching this. I've agreed to keep my shit together, and I am having trouble handling that, but uh, I am handling it. They just want money, right? So why don't we just give, give them enough money so that they quit begging? Randy said they'd pay them. It's fine. It's all going to be fine. I just wish they weren't roughing everybody up. It's like a shakedown. So they walk up to the car in front of you and the driver rolls down their window. Hi, I, I know the deal. Look, I'm sorry. I have no cash. Here's my purse. You can look through it. I swear I was on my way to the ATM just now. You can you can have all my change, but that's, that's all I have. I swear to God. So uh, the man takes the purse and sort of dumps it upside down and like loose change falls out of it. Uh, and he he manages to grab a couple of the coins, but most of them sort of hit the ground. And he tosses the purse back to her and sniffs the air for a second. And he says, uh, "Wait a minute, what's what's that? You just uh, you just hit a drive through?" Um, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. This is disgusting. But but that's my dinner. I said, give us the food. Oh, oh okay. I guess, and she hands. And he smashes it uh, and just starts eating it uh, and starts to walk up to your guys' car uh, and gets up to the driver's side. Uh, What are you doing, Darby? Can I say something? (laughs) Sure. I nudge you. Hey there, I loved hearing the tune. It's We're new in town, and it was lovely... To hear some people of culture, I adore classical music. Tell me, do you all take requests? Would you play something by Vivaldi for us? Uh, so, the the main orc uh, says, uh, "Boys, uh, we know we know Vivaldi," uh, and the rest of the the gang sort of chuckles and they just start playing this discordant tune. Uh, it's it's out of out of focus. <laughs> it, they miss beats. It's it's clearly not Vivaldi. Um, and I sort of just randomly uh, play it, yeah. Darby, and I say, Darby, I think you know what to do. All right. Well, I look at, I look at these guys, and I'm like, what can I do for you? Uh, and the main orc, he's, he responds. He says, uh, well, you know, it's a little bit extra for requests, so... And he just holds out his hand. Well, it Isn't seems that- to me like we're not getting the value proposition that we are paying for at this juncture, sir. Oh, you hear that, boys? He doesn't like our value proposition. And, um... Randy, Randy is, is trying to trying to roll down the the backseat window so he could he could pay cash to the to the two orcs that are leaning in uh on the 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 back doors uh who's in the back seat i'm in the back seat who's the other back seat person me it's gotta be yeah it's gotta be actually randy do augustine and excava roll down the the back back windows I'm probably in the middle. I'm I'm guessing I'm the smallest. Randy buckled himself into the middle. Randy's actually. in the middle. Oh, he's in the middle. Yeah. I roll down my window and I ask, how much would you need to just not bug any of these people and let us through? Randy <laughs> reaches over you and, and hands a, a 20 to the orc that you're talking to. Augustine, do you roll down your window? I don't. Randy is, is mashing a 20 against your window. Down. <laughs> uh, so uh crash sticks uh you guys think 40 dollars is enough for our beautiful rendition of uh v- vivaldi i think and it they, better be enough i think it better uh, be exactly like enough not bug any of these people excuse me and as you say that he takes his oboe and he just smashes the side view mirror and destroys it. Randy goes, oh. Yeah, I don't actually think Petey. it is enough. Petey. <laughs> Darby. Now, 
they don't, this car they don't is make, a piece of shit. They don't make the 2010 side view mirrors anymore, Darby. <laughs> Darby, I, I am. I'm not that shaken up about the car. I can't say that. You don't see any reaction. Randy about the car says. Randy says to the orc on the other side of the mirror or other side of the window. I'm trying to give. I'm trying to give this this twenty to you, but this guy won't roll down the window. I begrudgingly rolled down the window. The twenty. So, uh, sticks, Is that going to do sticks, it? Takes Darby, the, I the know 20. we already gave him forty bucks, but. You know, they did play Vivaldi for us. Maybe we should give them a tip. Man has a point. I, I just don't need that much more encouragement. Like, I, I feel like how close is the main guy to me? Is he still agitating for more money? Because I think if he if oh, he, if he yeah. roughs and, up and one more time, yeah, so, I, so I think I'm, I'm liable to go after him. Yeah. Uh, did you roll down the window when he came up? Yes. Yes. I rolled okay. Down so, yeah, I mean, we're face to face. Okay. Do I have one at my window, too? There. Uh, yeah, so there's one at each of the four doors. Okay. Um, okay, so my plan here is um, shock and awe. So uh, <laughs> I, I am, I am, uh, I am burning two blood. One, one to uh, one to get my potence going, and one to get my celerity going. And uh, I am, I am attempting to. Oh, no. uh, I am I am attempting to reach out and and smash this person's head against the car, oh, like to pull, pull them, thing. To pull them as angrily as possible into the car with as much force as I can muster. Yeah, I want to smash their head against the like top of the window. That's what I was about to do, but we'll let you go first, and then we'll get to me. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just were mean to innocent people around me. Like I'm not even a violent person. Like they just they have brought this out. They stole her fucking dinner. That's why That's you're outrageous. Mad. I'm mad because they disrespected the great composer. Baldi. <laughs> you were pissed about that. I All right, yeah, I'm in. I don't. What see am this, I rolling here? I don't see this as that. even being a role. I I don't believe that this orc is expecting combat. I don't see his defenses as being up. I I don't see him especially leaning with his weight forward on the door. I don't see him being prepared to dodge or swing back. So your your intention is to pull him into the car or just to smash to, his to pull him to pull his head at the car as hard as possible. So I assume I'm talking to him out the window. So the way I envision this is I reach out with both hands as hard as I can. And I grab him by whatever I can get, whether it's the the scruff of his jacket or the side of his, his body, whatever. And I yank him forcefully uh, into the car. So I envision his head hitting the top of the car. So like I, I like it's a P2 cruise, it's not that tall. I envision it's like, you know what? Five and a half feet off the ground. I don't know how tall this guy is, but I assume his head is above the top rim of the car. He's about six feet. And I am pulling his, I am pulling his head down into the uh, top rim of the door with as much force as I can muster. Your intention is to is blunt force to the forehead, not mm -hmm. not to that's correct. Not to that's pull correct. him, not to make him enter the car. Into the car. No. Nope. Nope. I am trying to. Yeah. Yeah. You're just blunt force smashing to the forehead. <clears throat> Uh, I think you should uh, I think your role is for damage and that's it <laughs> and okay. uh, he can roll how many how many dice it would be uh, strength plus potence and he can roll his stamina to soak and uh, the orc's stamina is uh, I believe two let me double check this yes so, how many successes is that? One, two, two, two and a crit. Three. Uh, yeah. So you just did three bashing to this guy, which yeah. is yep, which is pretty bad all at once. If I can narrate, Graham. Yes, please. All right. Uh, so yeah, you you grab him and you just slam his head into the top of this PT cruiser, and there's a sickening <clears throat> crunch, uh, and his head like bounces off of the top of this car and he just like does like bounces off and uh falls to the ground just on his back looking up um 
and there, his whole face is just bloody, and he just screams, and he's like, ah, ah, boys, I think we got a feisty one. Uh, and as he says that, uh, the two people at the back of the car also start to go into attack. Uh, oh, no. Into the car. Um, oh, fuck. So, uh, makes sense. I do have one more action before the end of this turn. Yep. I, I declared burning for celerity, uh, but I assume we're going to launch into, like, initiative and... Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next, but so just how do you want to? How do you want to handle my celerity action? Uh, what was your intention with it? I, I think. I think seeing that this is about to get heated, and that my attack served its initial purpose, which was to incapacitate this person and shock them. Uh, I think I want to rush out of the car, whether whether. I, I calculate that to be leaping through the window as the easiest and most efficient way to do that. Um, I want to just blitzkrieg immediately bum rush the guy that I had just hit, try to tackle him and knock him down just like a madman. And, and to these people who don't know Darby, and this is maybe the first time that they've seen him in action, this would be extremely disturbing to watch relative to what you've seen of him as a mild mannered, um, just disinterested, affable idiot. This is just singular focus, reckless mania of intensity that came out of nowhere. And Archibald seems like he was trying to encourage it a little bit, and maybe well, I was. I don't know how he that, feels about I, what he has wrought. Well, I'm not really <laughs> sure how the turns work, but what I envisioned is that I'm. I'm doing the same action and pulling my guy and slamming him. Oh, dope. <laughs> the exact same time. So I said that line where I was like, maybe we should give him a little tip. And then we both reach out and just like bang them. Oh, oh that, is so, that is so awesome. I think <laughs> we're going to here. Uh, but I'm not sure. Like, I didn't want to interrupt like the turn while we were doing those roles. Oh, that's, that's, that's cool. what I want to imagine us doing. But we'll roll mine after your turn's all done. Okay, so Darby is now out of the car, and we can now go into actual rolling for initiative and and combat uh, turns. Um, so you said it's celerity or do this celerity plus plus wits plus wit dex. dex. Okay, yeah, I'm at eight, but I don't get to add my celerity in because I already burned it for an extra action. Excalibur. So, uh, Hey, you can only it? do one or the other. What was Excavos? Um, I rolled. I had twelve. Yeah, seven plus five. And Augustine, what was yours? Ten. And Darby, <laughs> yours was sixteen. Sixteen. And we're gonna have each of the orcs go after all of you. Good. We had which? Which of the orcs were where? Uh, Obo Orc, who I'm calling Whistler, was the one who got his face uh, smashed in. <laughs> First one. Uh, then we have uh, the Orc with the symbols, who I'm calling Crash, who is uh, next to him on the same side of the car. Passengers, passenger side, we have uh, the guy with the drum, who I'm calling Sticks. That's in the the front. Yep, front passenger. Front, front passenger, yeah. And then uh, rear passenger, there's a guy with a uh, clarinet who I'm calling Hamlin. Jonathan, what a pleasant surprise. Thanks for joining us. No problem. I, thought I had it would no be idea we'd have an N NPC in the game. Yeah, had <laughs> like a, surprise. a guest star. <laughs> what the hey? We're going to declare actions in reverse initiative order. Uh, it looks like Whistler is just trying to. Oh, actually, uh, what is what is a Whistler intending to do? Uh, so he'll uh, call out for help, probably to uh, who did I say was on the same side? Crash. Yes. Uh, so yes. probably to Crash to like help him get up, um, and then I think he's still at the point where he's angry instead of scared. So he'll probably try to attack Darby, who will most assuredly be on top of him by that point. Uh, Crash then would intend to go to help get uh, Whistler up. 
and um, Hamlin and Styx are both going to be trying to attack into the car. Archibald, what is the the action that you were declaring? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to do what Darby just did to Styx. I'm trying to grab him and like crash him against the car again. Knowing that Styx is trying to attack you, you're not trying any yeah. defensive action. You're just trying to oh, at- attack oh. him instead. So the window has closed for that. Right. Yeah, I think I got I got kind of an element of surprise by okay. uh, sna- snapping out, and now we're all sort of oh shit, this is happening. So he's they coming do, at me. He act before him though. He has to declare uh, his act first, which he has done, and you then, get to act, act first. Since the surprise is gone, he's coming towards me. I'm going to like open the car door, but with such force. Can oh. how do I activate my like potence and stuff? Because he said he like Darby said he like had to activate his potence. How does that work? Oh, I, I'm a, I'm a guy that's got that though. That's like my thing. That's a uh, discipline. Uh, Darby, there's a lot you don't know about Archibald. Oh shit! What's your race, Archie? We've got two tanks, buddy. Oh, I'm I had no idea. A Bruja. Oh. oh damn! Shit's about to get real. Yeah. They, so. Potence can, much like celerity, I think, can act in an active sense and a passive sense. Um, so I, I can't remember. Burning blood gives you some some advantage in strength challenge. Like you just win automatically or something. Uh, you can spend one blood point and change your potence dice into an equal number of automatic successes and all strength-related rolls for the turn. Like to guarantee success? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All available. Um, no, yeah, I just want to like whip out the car door with like superhuman strength to just kind of like clobber him as he's coming at me. Yeah. Is the action that you're declaring that you're trying to move the orc back? He's trying to open the door with such force that it pushes the orc back, right? Sort of like hit him with the door, I guess. Yeah. I'm hitting Use the door as a weapon. It's kind of a, a defense. It's not the attack I was going to do. It'll be kind of a defensive mover where i whip it out and hit him with it so i would say it's an attack okay so between the two choices of you hit him and do damage but he stays adjacent to the door or you don't do damage but you move him back you want to you want to do damage but he stays right next to you oh yeah i want him right here where i want him okay next uh excavo so while I'm kind of marveling at Archie over there being violent, my character has me. So I have the smartphone from Randy that he gave us. But if we remember, I did also steal a phone when we were originally at the club. Uh-huh. Now I have this extra phone that I don't necessarily need. It would be nice to use as like a hotspot. So what I'm going to do... Um, with this this orc, I, my, my my window's open. This this orc person is right here. What I want to do is I want to take the phone and go up on the nose. <laughs> you want to use it as a weapon? You yeah. Hit him with the phone. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Technomancer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Uh, Augustine. <laughs> um, I have those two yeah, short <laughs> tontos, so I'm gonna brandish. Like, is the guy at my window running at the window? What is his? What is his motion? All of the orcs started <laughs> this leaning against the doors and leaning against the windows. Well, they and they're trying to attack. Like they had to declare their action first because they lost the initiative roll, right? Yeah. So they're just trying to attack you. Cool. I uh, I'm gonna brandish one of those tontos and just jab it at his jugular. Nice. Good. Yeah. <laughs> lethal damage is not about to fuck around. That's a that's an escalation. <laughs> that's quite an escalation, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, get it done. Just take care of it, and then it's done. You know, just. <laughs> they just wanted a donation. <laughs> they, yeah, I they, they're they're fitting no. they're fitting to get one. <laughs> They're trying to hurt me. I hurt back. <laughs> um, 
Well, Wait, are we are we just like in public right now? Oh, yes. You're in the middle of a, a line very of much. cars. A, very much. A whole stack of <laughs> stack this of witnesses. At me. I I am a woman Got trying it. to Got defend it. myself against a man. Yeah, I'm gonna hit hard and hit fast. <laughs> the people are gonna love us for doing this. Yeah, the they're gonna be like, that. hey, they stopped the well, all all actions have now been declared. This brings us now to the uh, attack stage. Uh, we're now going to execute this from uh, the highest initiative score down. Uh, Darby's used his his action in this round. We're going to go from Augustine on down. Uh, Randy, well, I have my celerity action. Got uh, my celerity action. Randy get an action. Um, Randy, Randy's whole action is just kind of writhing and complaining and drinking and spilling in the backseat. Um, uh, Darby's celerity action was uh, exiting uh, the, okay. the, the vehicle. Oh, so we're still just on the initial, the initial turn. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is a uh, first oh, round. Okay. Augustine is, is Augustine is stabbing, attempting to stab crash in the neck, in, in the neck. Uh, this is going to be a dexterity plus plus melee uh, roll. Uh, standard difficulty. And would you remind me, please, what is standard difficulty? Uh, six. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! Two successes. Cool. It's strength plus one. Plus, you got an extra success. So, damage is going to be strength plus two. Uh, what's your strength? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's two. So, roll four dice, you absolute monster. Woo! Four successes. <laughs> Crash, roll two dice to see how much of that you soak. So, humans can't soak lethal damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is true. Wait, I thought they were Oof. orcs or something. No. They're humans. They're, they're orcs, orcs in in name. In By name only. Tongue oh, I thought that we were fighting some actual orcs. Initially, okay. yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But the, the picture is helpful. So, so Crash <laughs> is extremely wounded. Uh, he's been slashed in the neck and and is probably yeah. flailing around. Uh, if anything, counterattacking, thinking that he's he's trying to save his own life. Uh, yeah, he's been opened up like a Pez dispenser. He, yeah, is, is bleeding profusely for the crime of asking for a donation. <laughs> Who's the bad guy here? <laughs> I, I, Are we the baddies? The natural terrors, the vampires. Uh, this was Augustine's opening move. <laughs> it sure was. Woo! Excavo. Okay. So, again, the phone to the nose. Now, this is this is going to be uh, dexterity plus melee. Is this considered hacking? <laughs> um, that's the noise that the orc might make if he successfully crushes nose. <laughs> I don't have any melee. And then the other stat was strength. Uh, it, it's a dexterity plus okay. plus nothing. So roll. Uh, the number of dice as the number of dots you have in dexterity. Could I add? Well, mm. no. Could it, I, it would just be dexterity. Could I spend a point of blood or something and like? You add more? can uh, spend blood to increase to increase dexterity uh, to increase the the number of dots you have of dexterity. Okay, I want I want to spend one. I want to make sure. So I'm gonna roll three. Oh gosh, here we go. What you got? No, that's Ooh, a niner. A nine niner and, and a ten. Two uh, success on three no. dice. We roll so well in this game. So one success? Because there's a one? One success. Oh, that's right. It's a crit. One success one means success. it works. That's all you need. Okay. And then damage? Uh, damage is uh, just your strength. Okay. So, uh, how many uh, dots of strength do you have? Right, right, right. I, I know that. Ah. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> you did one level of bashing? Yeah. You did sure. one level of bashing damage. You messed up his nose. Can, I uh, can try to soak it. Yeah, try to soak. If you oh, would, okay. I will try to soak. Oops. Okay. Like you said. Oh, no soaking. No soak. Oh, man. The drama. Nose, broke. Nose broke. So he he took a, a straight, painful shot I right mean, to the nose. Stop. How did the rest of us react to Augustin just, like, killing a guy? Like, that was just not not I, what we I were, feel like what we're, we were doing. Our Randy, Randy looks over just, like, just trying to trying to empty his sippy cup. Like, this, this is, this, this, mm-mm. <laughs> They're making me hungry. In in a very real way, you do start to react to the sight of blood. You will at some point become at risk of a blood frenzy where you will actually become, you will lose control and you will start to try to drink that blood. Who, me? Uh, yep. Oh, no. Isn't that like a <laughs> I know I'm super at risk. Her, her personally is, is she is she is susceptible to this. Um, yeah. Once you drop below uh, like twenty percent of your total blood pool, something like that. Oh, um, so like just about everyone would be susceptible. Except for me, I fed. Um, Plus, did, didn't we? Didn't we drink? We all fed. Oh, we all got two. two we all got two, two blood, blood points, points though. Yeah. That didn't restore all six. It was just two. I should have been at full full blood. I think I should have been the only one because we played that scene where I got everyone's looking uh, pretty good. Uh, Excava's down to three blood. Archibald. Yeah. This is going to be a a strength plus athletics roll to uh, to kick open the door hard enough mm-hmm. to do bashing damage to the guy on the other side. Do I add my potence to that? Uh, yes. yes. Oh wait, no. It's, you're, you're full strength. Six. You get six strength. I think it's. I. I think you would add. I want to say it's. It's strength plus athletics to do it. Potence would be added to the damage, though. Okay. So I. I'm, I don't so, think that that. I'm sorry to be like a rules lawyer guy, but I thought any strength check, if you didn't burn your blood for potence, you just got to add potence to your strength total. I. I'll agree with you. I think that is true. Yeah, go ahead and add potence to that. So I roll 10 D what? D, it, it's always D10. Always D10. Always D10, okay. So what's the uh, success one. rate or whatever? Uh, everyone that's well, at a anything six Anything over or six. Higher. Two, three, so four two, successes. Three, three. Yep, four. Just an absurd. So you only needed one success, so those three extra successes carry over to your damage pool. So your damage is going to be your strength, which is actually strength plus potence. So take strength plus potence plus three, and that's how many dice you're going to roll to figure out how much you just hurt this guy. Oh, wait. Strength plus potence. Spoiler plus three. a lot. So nine, right? That's... Strength yeah. plus three. Yeah. That's, that's mucho. Oh, Wow. But, uh, oh, two two crits on there, but one cancels out with that. Oh, they soaks two as well. One two. It's bashing damage. Dang. So it's not as bad as it looked originally. How many successes? I think it's just one. I think it's only two successes worth of damage. Well, damage is soak. six, right? Okay. It's five successes minus one for the botch, minus two for the soaks. So, so two right. two successes for damage. Okay, so uh, the orc named Styx takes two levels of bashing damage. Styx declared his action of attacking Archibald, and now is his opportunity to do that. Yep. What is my dex plus melee? Dex plus melee is four. I feel like we start hearing cheers from the other cars at this point. <laughs> and screams of horror when, at what Augustine did. When these poor musicians start standing up to this car no, of murderers. Like <laughs> people, and it's like a known thing that they do this. 
we might have gotten cheers before we murdered that guy. So <laughs> I feel like people people were like, "Oh yeah, someone's finally sticking up." Oh, oh shit! What are they doing? <laughs> they don't know. Dead. They don't know we're dead. They don't know. Like I thought that me and Darby might be the frenzied maniacs of the group, but uh, Augustine's Graham just is, a stone cold. Right? Is uh, <laughs> is electricity lethal? Oh god. It's. I think so. I think fire and electricity are both lethal damage to... Uh, fire is not... Yeah, yeah, fire is lethal, not aggravated for humans. Electricity is lethal, not aggravated. Electricity humans. can be, in different contexts, can run the range of bashing to aggravated. Uh, in this context, uh, I'm, I'm going to say is, is lethal. Okay. Uh, and am I? What am I rolling? Strengths? Are you? Uh, what? What specific attack are you? Are you trying to do an electrified is, instrument? Yes, absolutely, an electrified instrument. To the two hit is um, is dexterity plus melee. Got it. So did that, and I've got three successes. Okay, um, so you hit, and you have two extra dice to add to your damage damage is roll five five dice tell me how many successes you have looks like one success oh no it does one bashing plus one lethal the one bashing is from tunk the one lethal is from the uh the electricity uh jumping off of it and zapping Archibald. All right, so I take two levels of damage? Uh, yes, you do. You okay. get to try to soak. Oh, yeah, oh. sorry. Um, also, yeah, you get to soak. Roll. Uh, do you have a fortitude? Do I have fortitude? Is that a it's discipline? A, it's a discipline. It is a discipline. No, I do not. Uh, roll your stamina rating. One success. Cool. So, so I only take one damage. Yes, you soak you the lethal or the bashing. You soak the uh, the smallest one, so you take one lethal. Okay. Do I mark that somewhere different on my health, or do I just go down in the descending order? This is what uh, your health should look like now. You have one lethal okay, on, your, okay. on your bruised track. Sweet. So describe that, Mister Sticks. Uh, yeah, so I mean, Stick sort of gets like the door hits him, so he's sort of lunging forward at the same time you're you're bashing open this door, and the door hits him. Um, but because the window is open, he lunges forward with one of the the uh, drumsticks, and it sort of just like tips you on the nose, and mm -hmm. the the tip doesn't hurt, but the electricity sort of just gets you. Gives me a little zap. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right, so we've got the badly injured Crash, who just took a knife to the throat, yep. and in the weird way that that knife wounds work, he may not have even felt or noticed yet that he just took a really bad slash sure. across the neck. But it was his intention originally to reach in and give uh, Augustine some hell. Yep. Uh, so, um, I don't, I don't have the health blocks in front of me, Graham. What's the minus for four down? Minus two. It's, it's minus okay. two. Uh, so what did we roll last time? Uh, Dude is messed up. He is about to be unpleasantly surprised. Yep. Okay. So that is, uh, two successes. <laughs> uh, and then we said damage was five D 10, uh, minus two is three D 10. How much damage? Uh, no I think damage. It's, you get an extra d10 though, right? Because a bonus success you're, on your to hit. Right. So uh, another one, success. One damage. Like punching damage? Is it smashing damage? Graham, that's your call. Um, you have one damage from the attack. So you're you're reaching in with your with your symbol. Yep. Just just lunging in, trying to trying to go for him and, and hitting the button with the electricity. <clears throat> If there's, the 
If there's only one damage, it's because you just barely grazed them with the, the arc of electricity. Uh, so uh, Augustine takes one lethal if he does not soak it. And how does how many dice do I roll for soaking? Stamina uh, plus fortitude. Yep. Stamina and fortitude. That's a negatory. All right, so you take one lethal. So, Graham, how far does this electricity arc? Not very far, just like a few inches. Okay. All right. All right, round two. Uh, let's see, I think I still have... Uh, oh, is there still a guy? Yeah, Hamlin, who is trying to attack Excavo. Mm-hmm. He just got mm-hmm. bumped in the, the nose. I yep. broke his nose. <clears throat> Randy is is desperately trying to be like, I don't understand why any of this is happening. And he leans over Excavo. Could, is there maybe an argument that like... I could get my money back, and, he, <laughs> and he's like doing. He's like doing this. This is a botched roll, so, is it not? Yeah, that's a that's a complete botch. Uh, so uh, he sort of like lunges in, and he lunges, I think, too far into the car as he hits his little button on his electricity uh, in the back seat. Oh, he falls in. <clears throat> I don't think yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a botch roll. So he's just like, like he's like halfway, like he goes too hard, I think. And he goes like halfway through the window and just goes straight past you as he hits his little. Uh, straight star. past Excavo. Is yep. he hit Randy? Oh, I think in fairness, he hits Randy. <laughs> Hamlin, what instrument does Pissing Hamlin? Pissing off have? Randy is, is maybe this not is a, a good idea. This is a clarinet. Uh, well, okay. He does. He hits. He hits Randy uh, with with damage. And oh dear, Hamlin! What have you done? He might not make it to Israel. And he hits. Uh, <laughs> no, I think Randy's going to be fine. He hits. Um, he hits Randy. Um, what does what does Randy have to? to He's say? just got to so stamina for fortitude. Okay. Is this to soak with? Um, that a, oh, hmm, okay. That's fun. Okay. So here's a fun thing that happens. Um, so when... Huh. Okay, so... So, so Randy had an unfortunate uh, botching accident on his soak roll. Um, oh gosh! A, a funny thing that happens uh, when. Okay, so so normally in in the in the rule book for for Vampire the Masquerade, uh, it explicitly says nothing special happens when you botch a soak roll. There's one exception. And there's only one exception that's ever mentioned, as far as I know. And that is when vampires are taking damage from electricity. And it says that when vampires botch a soak roll from electricity, that damage becomes aggravated. It becomes aggravated because the vampires get burned because it becomes fire damage to that vampire. Oh, shit. If we take that to its logical conclusion and a guy covered in Bacardi 151... Oh, no. Did we just kill Randy? What What has happened here? Okay. He's going to go to a nice farm upstate. Since Augustine and I are in the back seat. Yeah, it's not great for you guys, it's by the way. On us. Yeah. Ugh, I didn't know. <coughs> Fire back. We, we we need to we need to get our heads in the game. This is no longer like a fun, happy time. Well no, we need to make sure no, nobody So Yeah, I thought we were just gonna super win. So this is <laughs> Oh god let's not make any assumptions. So this is this is just what happens. So so Hamlin tries to hit uh, Excavo. 
screws it up, overcommits, reaches in, hits Randy, who's trying to defuse the situation. A spark lights Randy's copious uh, shirt rum on fire. Mm -hmm. Randy is now very on fire. A a rather large fireball erupts Mm -hmm. pretty much on his shirt and lap and rises up to to the ceiling of the PT Cruiser that all of you, other than Darby, are pretty trapped in. I think this warrants a a pretty immediate uh, Rotrek test for... For those of you who are still in the vehicle, because this this pretty closely resembles the the trapped in a burning building scenario that that triggers the the, the fear frenzy condition. This is assuming that any of you have the intention to do anything other than immediately leave the vehicle. Much like, well, uh, I mean, there's a fireball. I want to get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no frenzy test necessary if your if your next intention is to get out of the vehicle. Yeah, and this person is laying on my lap, getting off me. <laughs> I guess my intention is to kick the door open and use a bit of blood to kick extra hard in the interest of getting out. You know, I guess we're actually still in combat rounds, and uh, <laughs> it's it's Whistler next. The only other thing that's that's changed about this condition is everyone in the car is aware that it's that Randy's on fire. Uh, everything's suddenly very hot. The fire is obviously spreading, and everyone else in the car is going to start taking fire damage probably in the next round if they're still in the car. And Randy doesn't seem very happy about his situation. I mean. Uh, it's Whistler's turn next. And, uh, uh, it's not even Randy's move until after that. Right. So <laughs> uh, so I don't believe I can change my action. Uh, I've already declared it. Uh, so, yeah. And sort of like the moment as the fireball is starting, you I can, don't even think... You can abort to a defensive move, I, I think, if you use... If you spend a willpower point or something what what is your uh what else would you do if you could change your your action uh yeah i mean if if he was capable like if he had enough time uh, he's immediately gonna yell at the group to to scatter and he's gonna try to get up and run away so if i have willpower to spend i would spend it to to do that you do you have a small number of willpower points and uh you have to either spend a willpower point or Make a successful willpower roll. Yeah, uh, in this case, I think it's worth spending a uh, willpower of my limited willpower. Uh, and Whistler just says, fuck, 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 what the hell happened? Uh, and just sort of like rolls to his feet and just says, oh, the boss is going to hate this and starts running. Uh, running in what direction? Away? Uh, yeah, definitely uh, <laughs> away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that- that's a good direction <laughs> no, no, I think that's- He's gonna run <laughs> he slides over the hood of the car and then runs that way no. <laughs> no. uh did the other orcs follow suit uh on their turn yeah so they've taken their turn for this round so okay. next turn that would be their intent okay <laughs> okay Randy, Randy on his turn goes, um, guys, fully fires not going out. Um, it's it's full uh, Vietnamese monk. He goes, everybody, everybody hang on. It's just fully, the fire's growing. I got this. I have an idea. And he, he unscrews his sippy cup and he pours it. Fire gets yeah. bigger, bigger, way bigger fire. Why did he pour it? No, I thought I forgot. I thought because it's blood. I got it. I got a different idea. Fire's getting bigger. Fires uh, is Randy. fires. It's all in the back seat now. It's just no, there's just black no, black smoke. All the upholstery <laughs> is burning. Guys, guys, I got this. I'm drunk enough that I have a clear head. I can deal with this. I have a brilliant idea. Okay, guys, 
Watch this. I got this. I got this. All right. You ready? All right. Watch. All right. He starts puking all over himself. <laughs> and as you can see, it's hard to see through all the, the black smoke, but you see just like an arc of like blood vomit. You can see as it like arcs out of the back seat and into oh, no. the front seats. You can see that like the puke stream itself is is flammable and now the front seat is just fully, yeah. fully on fire the whole thing is just a, a crematorium and randy's like oh god i really thought that was gonna work i'm so sorry guys i i thought that was clever now i'm out of ideas um it's uh randy are we still in combat rounds or what uh randy. unless if you're chasing the orcs nope <laughs> Okay, I, I am I am gonna try to save the people in the burning. So I'm also gonna say that the, the train starts the moving almost immediately. Oh, Wait, of what, course what is, it does. What is Darby doing? I I would like to a, a, attempt to help the people who are are burning in the air. Randy, if I if I may, I'm something of an expert in this. I push up my glasses on the bridge of my nose. All you need to do is stop, drop, and roll. Dar Darby, uh, who do you think is is trapped in what now? Are there? Are there? I thought there were still people in the car. Everyone has escaped the car. You gave people free escape from the car. It's just Randy in the car. It's just Randy in in the car. Oh, and he out. does not seem in any uh, distress other than trying to put out the car fire that is not being put out. Correct. <laughs> okay. Um, I my new plan then is uh, the the one that is injured. The the guy, the uh, orc gang guy that is injured, I am trying to stabilize that guy uh, and take the guy's money to give it to the people in the cars. Now, did um, I think it's it's worth clarifying what is going on with the the orc gang? Now, I I believe the the train has started moving. Can we can we clarify that? Yep. So Darby's yeah, self-interested like, fear, just to explain his thought process, is twofold. This guy might bleed out. He got stabbed in the neck. Don't want to get hung up for that. Number two, these people saw some shit. Maybe they didn't need to see. Maybe we could grease the skids. Hey, you didn't see anything. Give them their money back. No harm, no foul. So I'm trying to like look for money and also afraid of the guy dying. How many orcs are sticking around? How many are fleeing? What what are each of them doing? So all all three of them are going to try to flee. Um, I think I can't remember if it was I think it was Crash who got cut. That, Crash who got stabbed. That's yeah. yeah. So uh, he's he, he will right also now. right. He will also be trying to flee to the best of his ability. Um, and if uh, the other gang members sort of notice him struggling. Uh, you know, they might they might sort of give him a hand and sort of try to rush him out, um, just depending on, you know, how how quickly they can do that versus Darby sort of uh, stopping that. If I see that they're going for him, that they're not going to leave him behind yeah. to be our problem, then I'm content to let them have their guy. Like, I am not trying to, like, keep him or interrogate him or anything like that. I just don't want to deal with a corpse. Uh, masquerade breach, and it seems like they are on the same page as that anyway, not trying to cause that kind of ruckus. Am I able to rough any of them up for, for the money that they stole um, at, uh, while they're on their way out? The one is on the ground. I feel like I could have got to that one. Did that one have any money? Uh, I don't believe you gave that one any. Wait, wait which one? Uh, Crash had 20 bucks. Okay. Well, I, I give 20 bucks to the lady who got her, her lunch stolen because that really broke Darby's heart. Aww. Um, so I, I said, hey, you know, you didn't see anything. Sorry, things got hairy back there. Uh, here, here's some money for, for dinner. What do we do about Randy? Did, we, like, did he get out? Uh, Randy's still in the car. The whole car is on fire. Everything is terrible. But I, I, I'm not going in there. Well, sounds like a... Job well done, guys. We did it. When you <laughs> when you look back at the at the 
previously purple PT cruiser that is now not any discernible color. It's just a completely on fire skeleton of a vehicle. You see what looks like a skeletal hand kind of collapse and a a bottle of Bacardi 151 fall out of it and fall to the street and and roll away from the vehicle. Oh my God, he's dead. Like, like not just maybe you know. But I, I mean, mean, are you going to go in there and get him out? Stand, uh, stands to reason. Yeah, that's it. I I'm, I'm not. I'm not going in there. You know, to be fair, guys, they were asking for like twenty bucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the thing. We gave it to them and they didn't seem to be happy. <coughs> I tried yeah. to ask how much they needed in order. I don't to know why. I don't know why they escalated it like that. It didn't have to go down like that. Oh, well, well, they. No, no, yes, no. that they. It, it would have been. They stole that woman's dinner off the seat of her car. I thought this was America. So Did how did? They- they took, they took the Arby's and they got the Darby's. So how do the how do the orcs disappear? Where do we where do we see them? Um, so like as you guys are sort of arguing and and talking about this situation, you do notice that the four of them sort of uh, just immediately head uh, to where the train is, and it's maybe six or seven or eight cars uh, in front of you. Whistler has has crashed, and he's sort of like uh, folded over him um, and they all four of them sort of just jump onto the train <coughs> and, and heads out uh, and like almost immediately when they get on the train it starts moving um, and sort of very quickly thereafter once the train moves away from the tracks and opens up the intersection uh, people just start leaving like everyone in this line wants to get the fuck out of here <laughs> now what I guess we have to go well, yeah. Well, so Sorry, from- here, do we remember the address? Around, we have the address. So the guy that was showing us around is dead in a smoking ruin on the street. He's the prince. Um, so now this is, is the not- character, because in character, I'm not really sure how I'm processing this information. Just uh, we're we're fucked. That that double botch uh, is uh, in an unfortunate position here. The arms in front of the train tracks raise up. All the cars start passing by you. You're standing in the middle of the street. I guess we need to get off the street. All the cars right start passing by you. Some of the drivers look at you. They give you a combination of annoyed and confused and sympathetic looks. Most and there's of them, literally a car on fire in the middle of the road. There's literally a car on fire. You don't hear any sirens or emergency vehicles eventually at this point it's <clears throat> it's late it's getting near midnight eventually yeah. it's just you down. and uh oh no in in game eventually it's no, just, what, does the fire burn down eventually it does but at this point it's just you and uh, burn down fire. Uh, it's burned down enough for you to go in and investigate. Can we get the keys out? You can get the keys out. Okay, I want to get the keys. I want to get. I want to search Randy's smoking, smoldering corpse, you, if that's possible. You can do that. Is there anything in the back? Anything in the back seat whatsoever? Uh, I'm sure. I'm searching the car. Like it's a. It's a smoked out ruin. I'm trying to see if there's anything salvageable or, or decent. I'm, I'm <laughs> just, like indifferent, you know, uh, uh, bittersweet about the car being destroyed. I don't like to see any car being destroyed, but I did hate that car in particular. It was it was a pretty clean car. There wasn't really stuff that was stored in it. Uh, Randy didn't really have anything in his pockets. He had a cell phone, but it's uh, it's melted True. and burnt up. The keys uh, to the car are. There aren't any other keys on the on the key ring. The the door to Delacroix Manor wasn't locked behind him. You know that you can get back in it. Um, really? How close are we to the Chantry versus going back where we came from? Uh, not far. Half dozen blocks. 
And I are there any contacts in our cell phones? If I was to look at it, are there are there any of our contacts preloaded, or are they just like clean cell phones? Uh, you don't have you don't have any contacts yet, but you already know some people from Club Wonderland, and you know Jade at back at Delqua Manor. So with that, let's bring session two to a close. <laughs> Man. Uh, let's thank uh, Mr. Jonathan Conant uh, for joining us as uh, <laughs> as the orchestra, as as the I've gang of orcs. Guests. I have a feeling we'll be seeing them again. Perhaps. <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem likely to me. If you, if yeah, you, it's another boss, who knows? If you follow that that thread, perhaps we'll be seeing more of them. Blake, such an instigator. It did not have to go down like that. Like I feel like Darby was gonna let it go, and Blake's like, "Fuck him up." <laughs> yeah, like, dude. Okay. Uh, I feel like those I are not, not a great combo. There's a Darby, great weren't you the one who was the? Um, I thought you were the one who always rushed in and just did the stupid stuff, Darby right? Jenkins. I do, but only when people are in danger <laughs> or like <laughs> I don't know. This is, uh, as soon as it's on, it's on. But I was no, like, okay. Darby's got taken, dude. Well, He's gonna pay and then there's head. Augustine. And then Augustine's like, I put this knife in his throat. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ask me Because money. he asked me for money and he took that woman's burger. <laughs> I'm like, I was I was here, just murder. Yeah, no, I didn't realize when I was making my character that we were putting two tanks because I just looked at like everybody's class descriptions. I'm like, oh, we need somebody. And now we have like two frenzied maniacs on the. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that bounces out. I mean, I do feel like their style is a little bit different, and yeah. uh, we haven't really gotten into an ex- gotten into an extended combat. But you know, uh, mm-hmm. Darby is much more likely to grapple and grab and bite, and He's more just... the spray and pray kind of type. <laughs> Certainly not going to use. With guns, he can use guns, but like doesn't like, prefer just, to do that. You know, I, it's metaphorically, like you're just gonna go and hope that it works. Augustine, were you pleased to discover that there is perhaps a a magical plot afoot, and that you will be inheriting a forest? What Not to mention? Yes, Excavo. Did you catch the the thing where the the Nosferatu have a techie surveillance room that they need? That? When was that? It was in the note. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wasn't in the room for the note. Oh. I read it all up. Yeah. Oh, well, they have a surveillance room that needs destroyed, but that doesn't mean, like, you know. I mean, they, you could destroy it. Well, if we or leave it, then not, the humans not, are going to find it. Yeah. It's a thing. So, I, I mean, I don't know how much I'd use of it just because... We need well, to get rid of you'll it. never know until you try. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so lots of fun. Let's do it again sometime. Yeah, no doubt. I'm down on that. Yeah. GG, GG. Until session three. Good night, everybody. Uh, thanks again to Jonathan Conant. Thanks, John. And to everyone else. Bye-bye.